I would say. Awesome. Awesome. Thank you for your service, Dobby Barker. Thank you for your service, Michael. The post office, socialism for packages. <laughs> Shift happens. <laughs> That's a good one, too. Although I don't think we came up with that. I lost 18 pounds in just four days. Hi, I'm James Zetta. If you're like me, you've already tried and failed at many diet and weight loss plans. The 18 and 4 weight loss plan requires no exercising, no diet pills or additives, no laxatives, no meal replacements, and no diet drinks. The 18 and 4 program is crystal clear with a day-to-day, step-by-step, and meal-to-meal guide. If you're not satisfied with your results, I will give you my 30-day full money-back guarantee. Go to 18and4.com. That's the number 18, I am the number four dot com. We love that you're passionate about GCN. And whether you're a listener, a business owner, or a radio industry professional, we've redesigned the new GCN newsletter to keep you in the know. Get updates on your favorite GCN shows and hosts. Go to GCNlive.com and click on the banner in the upper left corner. Just for signing up, you're automatically entered for monthly giveaways. Start receiving your newsletter today. The future of talk radio. G. C-N. On Facebook, on the news, and in conversation. Since time began, tyrants have taken aim at personal liberties. Now there's a movie that aims back. The government has no more right to tell us what to put in our bodies than they have to take our guns or tell us what books we can read. Six drug police were eaten by bears while raiding a marijuana farm. On your knees, you dirty hippies! Jesus. On your knees! What's the problem, officer? Today, many cops who enforce pot laws do so only because it provides them with cushy jobs, good benefits, and a chance to push people around. I was an undercover narcotics officer. The drug war is nothing but a farce. The Second Amendment says you got to keep you and your gat intact. Guns and Weed, The Road to Freedom. A film by Michael W. Dean and Nima Vidati. DVD available now at GunsAndWeed.com or on Amazon. That's GunsAndWeed.com. Makes the perfect gift. Remember, that's GunsAndWeed.com. Lock it here for more live content. Free Talk Live is next on the Liberty Radio Network. You're listening to the Liberty Radio Network at LRN.FM. This is the Liberty Beat, your daily source for Liberty news and activist updates online at LibertyBeat.com. I'm Brian Hagan with your Liberty Beat for Friday, January 9th, 2015. Gold is trading at $1,211, silver at $16.44, and Bitcoin is trading around $297.96. Today's precious metal price is brought to you by Midas Resources Incorporated, helping clients convert their paper 401ks and IRAs to solid gold and silver. Get their 10 Reasons book free by calling 800-686-2237. That's 800-686-2237. The Liberty Beat is sponsored by eFoods Direct, redefining the way you think about storable food. With civil unrest occurring all across the country, being food secure has never been more important. Visit eFoodsDirect.com slash Liberty Beat or call 800-620-5520 to learn more about food security in a time of crisis. In the news, on Thursday, a bill to approve the construction of the Keystone XL oil pipeline passed another barrier in the Senate. The Senate Energy Committee approved the measure with a 13-9 vote. The bill will go before the full Senate next week, while the House of Representatives is scheduled to vote on Friday. A federal judge in California has overturned a ban on the sale of controversial foie gras, duck or goose liver, which has been fattened through force feeding. Foie gras involves deliberately fattening the animals by force-feeding corn through a feeding tube. U.S. District Judge Stephen V. Wilson permanently blocked the state attorney general from enforcing a law which banned the practice. Judge Wilson made his decision based on the argument that the federal government's authority trumps the states. Activists from across the political spectrum 
or organizing a global day of action against the use of torture on January 31st. In response to a lack of media coverage and action from politicians following the release of the Senate report on CIA torture, a number of organizations are calling for rallies and protests across the globe to stand in solidarity with victims of torture. The Anti-Media, the Conscious Resistance Network, the Solutions Institute, and a growing list of activist groups and media outlets are joining the calls for action. Several cities are planning on hosting mock waterboarding and force-feeding presentations. Today's broadcast of Liberty Beat is made possible by Central Texas Gunworks, your online source for firearms, firearm accessories, and ammunition. They take major credit cards and now accept Bitcoin. Visit them online at shop.centraltexasgunworks.com. Did you know you can support the Liberty Beat when shopping on Amazon.com? Just log into your account after clicking our Amazon affiliate link at libertybeat.com slash Amazon. This is the Liberty Beat for Friday, January 9th, 2015. Check out the website at thelibertybeat.com. The accused operator of the Deep Web Silk Road Marketplace is set to go to trial. Catherine Bleich has this Liberty Beat special report. Many of you know that in late 2013, the online Bitcoin black market known as the Silk Road was shut down. The alleged founder, Ross Ulbricht, was arrested and charged with conspiracy to traffic drugs, launder money, and even murder for hire in the state of Maryland. This month, he will go on trial for many of these charges in the state of New York. The Liberty Beat is pleased to announce that we will be there to report live from the courtroom the entire first week. With a generous donation from Roger Ver, also known as the Bitcoin Jesus, the Liberty Beats' Derek Bros is one of several activists who have been funded to travel to New York to serve as our eyes and ears. We hope to also send the Liberty Beats' founder and editor-in-chief, John Bush. The two plan to work in tandem as they live blog the courtroom actions, write narrative pieces, interview key people, and create audio media. Help us send our amazing team into the belly of the beast to document this historic trial by visiting thelibertybeat.com backslash support. You can expect the mainstream media to only paint a small part of the picture. Let the Liberty Beat bring you the truth. To learn more about Ross and his case, visit freeross.org. Today's edition of the Liberty Beat is sponsored by My Magic Mud, detoxifying tooth powder, the most effective and affordable dental care around. Get a 150 application jar at MyMagicMud.com. Reflecting on the persistent troubles it caused his sibling during childhood, local doctor Daniel Barrett told reporters this week about his average-looking brother, Kevin, who first inspired him to be a cosmetic surgeon. As a kid, I remembered thinking that there was nothing I could do for Kevin. Watching someone you really love and care about suffer from a weak jawline or unsymmetrical features it had a major impact on me. And in this week's local news, a community theater gives the part of Blanche Dubois to Kathy F Hamilton. In other news, a moviegoer manages to sneak candy past a teenage usher earning $7 an hour. A new app matches you with others in the vicinity who wasted $2.99 on the same app. And a Roman centurion crawling out of a New York City manhole cover is in for one wacky adventure. Having graciously spread my knowledge to the uneducated masses, I now return to the stately, elegant ranks of News Announcer Society. For more, keep checking TheOnion.com. This is The Onion News Network. This is Free Talk Live. You can call in, bring up whatever is on your mind. The line is 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. Or if you have the Skype, you can Skype in. The username is lrn.fm. You will need to send a contact request first. That way we can then make the connection, send you a message asking what your show topic is, and then we can bring you on. And generally, Skype sounds better than a landline. As long as you have a good computer connection, a good internet connection, and you're not, you know, like uploading or downloading a bunch of things when you're on the air with us. And the us tonight is Daryl. Derek J. And Danica. And Derek, you have an interesting story about a cartoonist in Seattle, Washington, who has been hiding for four years. Yeah, that's right. But let's back up a little bit and put this in some context. Uh, I only found this story because of the horrible massacre that happened recently in 
France. Yes. Uh, a cartoon um, satire office in Paris was um, raided by an is what appears to be an Islamic extremist, as so the mainstream story goes, and 12 people were killed. They lost their lives. In 12 this. people killed, 11 wounded, I believe, is the figure that I saw earlier today. Yeah, and uh, I think that's tragic. And these people only produced cartoons. Of course, they didn't hurt anybody or cause any victims, um, it, not in my opinion, by producing this art. You know, it's just a, an expression of ideas. And so I found this story, and, you know, that happened in Paris, but the U.S. is not too different from France. And here I learned a Seattle cartoonist is in hiding for four years uh, after, in 2010, she created Draw Muhammad Day. Here's her story from foxnews.com. Cartoonists around the world reacted defiantly to Wednesday's deadly Islamic terror attack at the offices of a Paris magazine. But the case of Mali Norris shows how the attack and prior threats of similar violence have already had a chilling effect on journalists who use art to convey their stories. Says Norris, a Seattle-based political cartoonist, has been in hiding for more than four years after she launched Draw Muhammad Day, a call to professional and amateur artists alike to sketch the Islamic prophet whose image is forbidden by the Quran. Now, did she come up with this idea before or after the backlash from uh, the South Park episode where they showed and then did not show Muhammad? I'm glad you asked, Daryl. Norris was an obscure cartoonist and blogger who took action after the creators of the show South Park were targeted by Muslim extremists for an upcoming episode in which Muhammad was to be depicted. So the hit show's producers caved to the pressure of death threats and blurred the image of Muhammad when the show aired. Actually, I, I believe the show initially aired showing Muhammad. It was upon a rerun that they wound up blacking out the image. Is I that, don't know about that. Is that really so? Okay. Anyway, Norris's own cartoon... According to the article, that's not what happened, Daryl. Uh, according to the article, they, they aired the, the episode with a blurred image of Muhammad. And so Norris's own cartoon image of Muhammad was never published in the Seattle Weekly, which often carried her work, but it went viral on the internet. U.S.-born Muslim cleric... Anwar al-Awlaki issued a fatwa calling for the killing of Norris. Quote, We're no longer a free country if we journalists can't criticize a religion that, for example, believes apostates need to be killed, said Norris's one longtime colleague, Larry Kelly. And he's right. That's why I bring up this story. That's why I think this is so important. There's more to this, but that's the crux of my uh, gripe with this type of Violence against people who are only producing art. Like if we're still in, if we're still dealing with problems of people dying over expressing their opinions and beliefs, um, then we're no different from the Middle Ages. Well, the reason why it's so offensive to the Islamic faith is that you know um, that Allah is you know is just is so perfect in everything that if someone were to even attempt to draw him or paint him with any kind. Of likeness, no matter how much the artist tried to glorify him, there's just no way they could come anywhere close. That's why it's forbidden. That's why it's so offensive to them. I, I told you know death threats. That's that's outrageous. Yeah, it's just too like old world for me. I I can't handle it. Anyway, the the article continues. Even though Norris backed off the idea for Draw Muhammad Day, the bounty remained. She took her concerns to the FBI, and the agents in the Seattle field office told her the threats on her life were legitimate. She was encouraged to go underground. What? Seattle Weekly reported that Norris moved, changed her name, and is living in hiding, akin to the Witness Protection Program. This is in America. A, a woman in America is hiding because of an idea for a cartoon that she put on the internet. Just think about that. Yeah, that that's absolutely insane. But at the same time, let, let, let me just sort of play devil's advocate here. Should people try to intentionally offend one another? 
Um, I, that's a that's a personal opinion thing. I mean, some people would argue that all progress comes from offending people. Like, not not all offending people is progress. But if you're really going to make moral progress in the world, it's going to have to offend a large majority of people. Someone's bound to get offended somewhere along the line. So well, you, there's no way around it. You think about how offensive it was to the idea that uh, people end slavery. I mean, think of all the people who depended on slavery, and they were horribly offended at someone proposing that idea. And, you know, similarly, I think people proposing the idea that— uh, Profit could be made fun of in a cartoon is deeply offensive to some people, but they're going to have to deal with it. The point is, you can't use violence to make your point. You have to fight fire with fire, and in this sense, if it's artwork, fight it with artwork. Produce more words and ideas, and fight it on the battlefield of ideas, not not with bullets and blood. Right, and I I, I was not advocating you know killing people because they make a cartoon. Right, but the point that I was trying to make is. If you know something is going to offend someone, then should you go out of your way to be as offensive as possible so that you can then say, hey, I'm just making art? It works. It's working for South Park. Yeah. So Larry Kelly, this uh, co- colleague of Norris's, she try- or he tried to raise money for Norris. He created the Molly Norris Foundation and fundraising he says has been slow, mainly because her story hasn't received much attention. It's kind of hard to publicize a woman who's completely underground, right? It was like a one-day story, and then it's gone, says Kelly. She went underground, and that's it. Gone. And most people don't even know who Molly uh, Norris is. Norris did, however, there's a happy ending to the story. Norris did outlive the man who put a price on her head, Al-Awlaki, was killed in 2011 in Yemen by a U.S. drone strike. I, and that's only a happy ending to the story because it's reported by Fox News. I, I don't right, think that's right. right. And it should be noted that Anwar al Awaki and his son, both killed by drones, were never convicted of any offense in an American court. Both American citizens. Yeah, but uh, it certainly wasn't nice of him to put a death threat on her head. Um, right, I mean, and I, I'm not saying that it was. Yeah. I, I'm just pointing out that, you know, he was executed by the U.S. military and was never convicted of a crime. So I guess my point in bringing this story to you guys is like, how do we reconcile that we pretend to live in a civilized society where people can express ideas? We live by that uh, principle. I may disagree with what you say, but I'll defend to the death your right to say it. How do we reconcile supposedly living in a society that respects the, that virtue and then the reality of reading on the news that people are dying over cartoons being published and a cartoonist being underground for four years. How do we reconcile that? That's a good question. And hopefully somebody listening will have some input on that. You can call in with your thoughts. 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. And Derek, I'm actually glad that we started the show with your story because I have a story. Apparently, there was a study done recently that shows that Muslims are overrepresented as domestic terrorists on U.S. news. You'll never guess who's underrepresented. Find out when we come back. So the protection of life, liberty, and property is is what the Free State Project is all about. But it's an an effort to move 20,000 people who understand. It's about demonstrating to the entire country. That, yeah, we can have a free market, a truly free market. Making it just a freer, great place to live. It's the world's largest voluntarist, libertarian community, and it's it's only getting bigger. That's amazing. To be able to move to a place where other people like passionately believe in being free and independent. What the Free State Project is managing to do, though, is to put their money where their mouth is. It's physically getting up across the country and saying, let's go someplace and let's demonstrate the power of these ideas. There's a lot of kind of philosophy that surrounds liberty. There's a lot of thinking about it and talking about it. But here in New Hampshire, people are doing it. 101 Reasons Liberty Lives in New Hampshire, a documentary by Free State Project Early Movers. Watch it free at 101reasonsfilm.com, 101reasonsfilm.com. 
Adam Miller here with Midas Resources. Today is January 5th, 2014, and gold opened at 1197.90. A one ounce gold coin can be purchased for 1242.08, 621.04 for a half ounce, or 310.52 for a quarter ounce. That's 1242.08, 621.04, and 310.52. Hi, this is Ted Anderson. Have you ever wondered why banks, stockbrokers, investment advisors won't talk about gold IRAs? Wait a sec. Gold and silver is going up while Congress is trying to settle on the next debt increase. And there's no end to this madness. That old 401k and IRA can be converted into physical gold without tax consequences. I explain this in my book, 10 Reasons to Buy Gold. Don't let time slip away. Call for your free copy today, 800-686-2237. Get away from that Washington spin and get honest answers about gold. 800-686-2237. The book is free, 800-686-2237. The Shire Free Church offers a sanctuary to those seeking an escape from state churches. The Shire Free Church is an interfaith, diverse group of people that may not share identical theological beliefs. As a member in or minister of the Shire Free Church, you are a sovereign individual and may be the faith of your choice. We don't claim to have all of the answers. We are open to all peaceful people. We want to learn from each other. What unifies the Shire Free Church and its diverse members is peace, love, and liberty. There are many paths to God, one for every individual. The Shire Free Church does not define a specific path beyond those parameters that must be your foundation. Peace as your way. Love as your guide. And liberty as your light. Learn more at church.shiresociety.com. That's church.shiresociety.com. The three most important things you can do for Free Talk Live are, one, share one episode a week on Facebook or in some other social networking site. Two, buy the things you buy online through shop.freetalklive.com. Three, give five bucks a month to the AMP program. It's my firm belief that Free Talk Live's AMP program is the best use of your charitable dollar among liberty-oriented organizations. Support all the organizations you love. But make sure you give five bucks a month to AMP at amp.freetalklive.com. Radio is the most personal of mediums. I exist right now in your head. If you listen to Free Talk Live regularly, you know me. Free Talk Live is on more than 160 radio stations around the U.S. and has been downloaded on every continent around the world. Hundreds of thousands of listeners with ad packages from $600 a month to $6,000 a month. Imagine what we can do for your business, project, website, or idea. Email me, mark at freetalklive.com. You're listening to the best Liberty-oriented audio streamed around the clock, on the air, and online. This is the Liberty Radio Network at LRN.FM. This is Free Talk Live, 855-450-FREE. That's the call-in line. It's toll-free. 855-450-3733. And if you have the Skype, you can Skype in to username lrn.fm. Why do you call it the Skype? I asked him this one show, too. It's just Skype. I don't know. I I, I just like doing that. You know, like the Facebooks, the Internet. But no one calls it the Facebook anymore. Daryl does. Well, that makes you special. And sometimes Daryl refers to himself in the third person because I'm just that strange. So we can either choose to keep calling him out on it until he stops or just learn to accept it, Daryl. I just, just had to learn ask. to accept it. All right. I, I I heard it the first time and I I just let it go because I was like, nah, I didn't hear. I didn't just hear that. But now now I've had it confirmed. Yeah. You're, you're just weird. It's cool. Yes. I got it. Yes, I am. So joining Daryl in studio tonight is? This is Derek J. And Danica. See, got both of you to refer to yourself in third person. (laughs) Job well done. So I've got a story that sort of follows up the first topic that we had tonight about the Seattle cartoonist who's been in hiding for four years for creating Draw Muhammad Day. Apparently, there has been a study evaluating breaking news stories in the U.S., 
and found that Muslims are overrepresented on U.S. television news as perpetrators of domestic terrorism, while African Americans are underrepresented as both criminals and victims. What? Really? It the- seems like they're overrepresented in the mainstream media. Is this just one particular study? Uh, this was a study in, for like ec- religious extremism or something uh, done between 2008 and 2012. Okay. Evaluate evaluated 146 episodes of news programs that focus on breaking news. Oh, okay. The study was performed by University of Illinois communications professor Travis Dixon, and he evaluated episodes including ABC World News Tonight. CBS Evening News, Mm -hmm. NBC Nightly News, PBS NewsHour, Anderson Cooper slash Anderson Cooper 360, CNN Newsroom Live, The Situation Room, which airs on CNN, Fox News Live, and On the Record with Greta Van Sustern from Fox News, MSNBC Live, Univision Ultimate Hora, and wow. Noticero Univision, also on Univision. Uh, so, you know, a, a broad spectrum of I'll say. outlets here from both the, you know, supposed left, supposed right, as well as uh, something that, you know, is not necessarily uh, mainstream among English speakers, but definitely uh, for Spanish speakers wanting news. You know, Univision it definitely has a following. Uh, so the article here from UPI says, of the stories about domestic terrorist suspects, 81% were Muslim, though FBI data collected from the same time period indicates that only 6% of suspects were actually Muslim, meaning that they were overrepresented by 75 percentage points. Mm. Dixon said that white supremacists were more likely to take part in domestic terrorism in that time frame than Muslims. Dixon said that he expected African Americans to be overrepresented as perpetrators of crime. Yeah. And the opposite to be true of white people. But the study found African Americans were significantly much less likely to be depicted as violent crime perpetrators on network and cable news at 19% than to be arrested, according to crime reports, 39%. Well, this just shows I am clearly biased. I have uh, a misconception about crime and race. Uh, it sounds like, I, I mean, this can't be the, I can't be the only one surprised by this news. It sounds like, uh, what, bl- you said black people are underrepresented. As and, both criminals and victims. And white uh, supremacists are more likely to be domestic terrorists. This is, wow. I mean, I never, when when do you hear that on the news? Like, another white supremacist bombs a building. Hardly or ever, really. Yeah, that's, uh, I've never heard that. Not in my lifetime, but you say that's uh, 2008 to 2012. So this yeah. this is in my lifetime. This was right. like this, a few years ago. This has been within the last decade. Huh. I guess I'm not paying attention well, well enough. Well, and it also says that... Uh, he expected African Americans to be overrepresented. So even the hypothesis that he came in with was proven to be incorrect on that one point. Hmm. He continues African Americans were less likely to be portrayed as homicide victims on network and cable news programs at 22% than to actually be homicide victims, according to crime reports. Wait, what? 48%. I don't know what that means. They were report. Wait. They so were- 48% of all homicide victims during 2008 to 2012 were African American. But of the news stories about homicides and homicide victims, only 22% of the news stories were about African Americans that were Uh, homicide victims. Why do you think that is? That's a very good question, and it could have something to do with what I would call the Nancy Grace syndrome. What's that? And, of course, he did not study the Nancy Grace show because she doesn't Who's do the breaking news. Oh. Uh, yeah, the, the guy doing the study here, uh, Travis Dixon. All right. Uh, Nancy Gra- the, the Nancy Grace syndrome is 
any story about a young white teenage female, uh huh, you know, headlines all over the place. Oh. So she only reports on white teenage for girls. the most part. Ah. That there was a parody article that came out uh, about a year and a half ago that says Nancy Grace accidentally reports on missing African American girl. Wow. And it. <laughs> Oh my goodness. And it was poking fun at the fact that pretty much every story that Nancy Grace does is about a young, attractive Caucasian female. Is this her own bias just being projected or is this I think a, so. is this a market bias? Because so, it could be both. Yeah, I wonder if the people who tune in to this show or the you know, not this particular not Free Talk Live, but this Nancy Grace program like, or or other ones, I wonder if that's what they seek. They want these these types of stories. They they care more about a young white female than and they, they care about. And it could be something a, a, a of man. pandering to the audience. Yeah. Because a lot of times, you know, people that live in inner cities, they're not going to be watching Nancy Grace. <laughs> I guess Partly not. because Nancy Grace isn't providing them stories that they can relate to. Yeah. And also because of other situations of, you know, they might not have the cable package so this or is like, whatever. This is kind of a broader problem of too much news. Like there's so much news to choose from in a given day and, and different variations of it. Right. Everyone's got their own spin. So if you're a person who consumes a lot of news, you can pretty much get news completely tailored to you and then shut out the whole rest of the world that's happening. Oh, yes. absolutely. That's yes. a problem. And the- if, if you want to be informed. The study here, or rather the article continues, uh, white people, the study found, were just as likely to be victims or perpetrators of crime as reported in the news. Hmm. So real life actually did mirror on that. And he found that Latinos were overrepresented as undocumented immigrants. Oh, that There's is just weird. a little bit more of the story here that we'll get to when we come back on Free Talk Live. Did you know by age 50, half of all men have an enlarged prostate? This means more urges to urinate, longer bathroom trips, waking at night to urinate, or issues with sex. If this sounds familiar, call us now, because we're shipping free bottles of Super Beta Prostate to listeners of this station. Super Beta Prostate is a non-prescription formula guaranteed to reduce the symptoms of your enlarged prostate. It's yours free. Pay only shipping and handling. Just call 1-800-881-1075. In clinical trials, the ingredient in Super Beta Prostate was shown to reduce urges to urinate, improve bladder emptying, reduce waking at night to urinate, and improve quality of life. This Super Beta Prostate free offer is for listeners of this station, but it won't last. Don't wait. Just call 1-800-881-1075. That's 1-800-881-1075. Call 1-800-881-1075. Why did you move to the Shire? I moved here to the Shire because there's other people around who take liberty just as seriously as I do. I moved to the Shire because I saw videos of people challenging authority and thought that I could get support myself. It called to me, like, do this right now. I wanted to be around people like me who got it. And once I got here, I knew there was nowhere else that I wanted to be. I've always wanted to change the world, so I moved to the Shire to join people who were actually working towards doing the same thing. The people here are awesome, loving, and positive. It was for the adventure and for the feeling of something important is happening here, and I just wanted to come to sort of be part of that. Visit ShireSociety.com to read and sign the Shire Society Declaration and learn the reasons why, if you love liberty, you should immigrate to the Shire. Plus, add yourself to the Shire map at ShireSociety.com. That's ShireSociety.com. When I found the Free State Project, I knew it was the key to achieving liberty in my lifetime. It's awesome to be surrounded by like-minded, freedom-loving activists who've moved here to New Hampshire. From politics to civil disobedience, we have it all. Where I came from, it felt that no matter what I did, liberty was dying. Perhaps you feel the same way? Call 888-377-2515 now to learn more about the Free State Project. That's 888-377-2515 or visit freestateproject.org. You can listen to Free Talk Live on the radio, podcast, satellite, webcam, and our live streams. But did you know you can listen to Free Talk Live from any phone, anywhere? Add this number to your phone, 213-493-0308. 
It's a long-distance call, so make sure you're familiar with your phone's calling plan. The Listen Lines are airing the latest episode of Free Talk Live 24 hours a day, including our live shows. Call 213-493-0308. That's 213-493-0308. So the protection of life, liberty, and property is, is what the Free State Project is all about. But it's an, it's an effort to move 20,000 people who understand. It's about demonstrating to the entire country. That, yeah, we can have a free market, a truly free market. Making it just a freer, great place to live. It's the world's largest voluntarist, libertarian community, and it's, it's only getting bigger. That's amazing, to be able to move to a place where other people like passionately believe in being free and independent. What the Free State Project is managing to do, though, is to put their money where their mouth is. It's physically getting up across the country and saying, let's go someplace and let's demonstrate the power of these ideas. There's a lot of kind of philosophy that surrounds liberty. There's a lot of thinking about it and talking about it. But here in New Hampshire, people are doing it. 101 Reasons Liberty Lives in New Hampshire, a documentary by Free State Project Early Movers. Watch it free at 101reasonsfilm.com. 101reasonsfilm.com. While our satellite channel is free to listen to, it's not free for us. You can help us cover our satellite costs with the chip in on the right side of the page at lrn.fm. Eight fifty five four fifty free. That is the toll free call in line. If you want to call and Bring up whatever is on your mind. We've been talking about the uh, start of the show with a story about a cartoonist in Seattle who has been in hiding for four years because she created Draw Muhammad Day. And last segment, we started talking about a study that was done by a University of Illinois communications professor that found some startling information about Muslims being overrepresented as domestic terrorists in U.S. media and that African Americans seem to be underrepresented as perpetrators or victims of crime. And we'll get back to that study in just a second. This. Exposing this, uncovering the secrets and exposing the lies. That's what the readers of freedomsphoenix.com get every day. Readers of freedomsphoenix.com are constantly provided the detailed real news that lies between the lines of propaganda and the relationship we have with coercive governments. Freedomsphoenix.com offers up to the minute updates on the economy, technology, communications, and the rise of the police state. Go now to freedomsphoenix.com and sign up for the free daily dispatch, freedomsphoenix.com. So the <laughs> the study done by Travis Dixon, the communications professor at the University of Illinois, he came up with three hypotheses. And I actually have the study pulled up here. Uh, first, based on prior research, Dixon expected that whites would tend to be overrepresented as victims, while African Americans would be overrepresented as perpetrators. Second, based on prior research, suggesting that Latinos are associated with problem issues, we expect that they will be overrepresented as undocumented immigrants. Furthermore, we expect that Muslims will be overrepresented as terrorists compared to official government reports. I want to know why you think this is important. Why does this matter to you, Daryl? It matters to me as a journalist because I study a lot of news. Yeah. And, and you, were your presumptions wrong about the news? Uh, I, I would say that after reading this uh study or actually reading the article about the study i've not actually read the entire study yet yeah it sounds very accurate because i i do have to dig through stories to especially whenever there's uh something that is portrayed as some sort of terrorist attack i have to dig through to actually find out what really happened instead of you know the ad hominems of 
these Islamists or other, you know, blatant just name calling that's thrown into the article and passed off as a news story. So I, I like reporting on what's actually going on without sort of, you know, sensationalizing things. And I, I think with the events that happened a couple of days ago, it is important to, you know, point out that, you know, yeah, not everybody that does terrorist things is a Muslim. Yeah. And not all Muslims are terrorists. Yeah, I had to say I fell victim to that when I saw this um, story on the mainstream news, on the front of Drudge and all the rest of the places. It was like, you know, Muslim extremist attacks Paris office or something. And I'm like, oh, no, not again. It seems to me like maybe it's uh, I'm a victim of propaganda, but it seems to me I'm being fed these stories that paint a picture of the world that Muslims are extremists who commit cr- heinous that crimes against peaceful that. people and against civilization. Yeah, yeah, and it sort of paints with a broad brush, you know, it makes all Muslims look bad. And then right. um, you make a valid point about this study s- s- underrepresenting the uh, number of white supremacists who are committing crimes right. and, and committing terrorism. So, yeah, I mean, and, and then the media has its slant, and it's wh- important to get the facts. Whenever there is a news story... And it's one of these, you know, shootings or whatever, and the person is white. I sit there and cross my fingers and say, don't let them portray him as a libertarian. Oh, because no, that's yeah. what they tried to do. Remember with Timothy McVeigh. They can still call him a Muslim. There are white Muslims. There, there are, but generally, when it's a white person, they try to portray them as some anti-government extremist. He read an Ayn Rand book that one time, so therefore libertarian, therefore <laughs> yeah, right. all libertarians are bad. Yeah. Yeah, huh. that, that is certainly a good point. Or they could be like an extreme, quote-unquote, Christian organization such as the Westboro Baptist Church. Right. R- remember there was the uh, Colorado movie theater shooting that happened a couple of years ago. Yeah, with that crazy guy. The crazy guy that went into the premiere of you know some Batman movie yeah. And shot people up. With the orange hair. And Some people said he was on uh, crazy drugs. He was on crazy people drugs and that, thought the government was talking into that, his ear. That's what I've heard. Yeah. But there was one of the major news outlets that did horrible journalism where they Googled this guy's name. I, yeah. I forget even what the first name it was, but the matter. last name was Holmes. Yeah. Joshua which is a Holmes fairly common name. Yeah. And found that there was someone with the same name that was on an email list for the local Tea Party group. Oh my god, he's a Tea Partier. Not even the same age, not even from the same part of the state. Yeah, but it's a confirmation bias, right? You know the journalist who was looking up right. this guy was like, whoa, he had to be a Tea Party guy, and then he sees it, and he's like, oh, there we go, confirmation. Yeah, and then it was like, you know, a day and a half later when they realized, wait, it's not even the same guy. The guy that's in the Tea Party thing is 51. This other guy's 26. I gotta say, you know, I'm so grateful for the age we live in, the internet age, and websites like Scopes.com. Is that the one? Or Snopes? Snopes. 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 Yeah, Snopes. Snopes. Uh, for... You know, doing the investigative work that it's so difficult for, you know, it wouldn't make sense for every person to investigate every story. They sort of specialize in that. Oh, it's, yeah. Right. And it's cool to know what's fake and what's not. And, uh, you know, it's hard to navigate this world of media. There's so much of it. Oh, and, and so many so of them many... are lies. Oh, yeah. So many fake stories. Like, there's one fake story about the woman that supposedly got a third breast and, you know, to try and make herself unattractive and then that turned out to was be that a real thing no it wasn't and but you know that it was fooled portrayed. everybody it fooled everybody and the crazy thing is is that people started to accept it as real without being like you know what i'm gonna take a look into this myself i mean because we want it to be real we want to be real <laughs> right so let, let's get back to the study real yeah, quick right the second hypothesis that was made was that latinos would be overrepresented as undocumented immigrants In order to test the hypothesis, we dichotomized our race variable to indicate whether or not the perpetrator was Latino. We also examined the race of perpetrators identified as immigrants, and we assessed which racial groups were accused of undocumented immigration. And then they have a table where they have broken down their numbers, so you can look at that. 
Uh, it says the table reveals that Latino perpetrators were significantly more likely to be seen as immigrants, 97% on network and cable news, than to actually be immigrants in the U.S., 47%. Similarly, Table 5 reveals that 99% of the undocumented immigrant perpetrators are Latino, while 75% of undocumented immigrants in society are actually categorized as Latino. These results suggest strong support for hypothesis number two. Is this all separated by race, or do they have any religion uh, categories. Uh, I believe it's all separated by race, except for Muslim, because yeah, Muslim why is, that's is, not a race, right? Muslim is a religion. Why are we even differentiating things in race? That's a very good point. Because society tries to you know do this yeah, weird. They're put helpful. People in groups. It's helpful to you know find patterns and categories and stuff. It just seems so weird to group like whites, Hispanics, then Muslims. That, those yeah. categories don't even make sense. Right, but they, these were also uh, testing different things. Right. There's more when we come back on Free Talk Live. Shiny badges on your jacket. Shiny badges. This is Davi Barker from shinybadges.com, and I just want to personally apologize for airing a jingle week after week, month after month, that turned out to be such an infectious brain worm. So to make it up to you, I'm offering a free gift. The next time you make a purchase at shinybadges.com, write worms in the transaction comments, and I'll send you something weird. It's the end of year clearance sale at Lumber Liquidators. We'd rather sell it than count it. So every floor and every store is on sale, and it all must go. Get incredible deals on first quality flooring from just 35 cents a square foot. Beautiful three-quarter inch pre-finished solid hardwood is just $179. Save even more on all liquidation clearance and closeouts. If it's in stock, it's on sale. And pay no interest until January 2017. Don't miss these end-of-year deals on over 400 floors. Visit LumberLiquidators.com to find a store near you. If the the IRS has garnished your paycheck or seized money from your bank account. You need to get professional tax help now. Fast action is required to put a halt to these aggressive IRS collection tactics. You can count on the knowledgeable team of tax professionals at Wall & Associates. With over 30 years of experience, Wall & Associates has settled the tax problems of thousands of taxpayers for a small fraction of what they owed. For a free face-to-face -face consultation, call 1-800-425-4610 to put a wall between you in the IRS. 1-800-425-4610 or look for us on the web at wallandassociates.net. We solve tax problems. If you hire Walland Associates today, you'll never have to talk to the IRS again. To stop the levies and seizures today, take action now. Call Walland Associates at 1-800-425-4610. Wall and Associates. 1-800-425-4610. Based on actual cases, results may vary. Not a solicitation for legal services. There is no such thing as attention span, according to Jerry Seinfeld, who figures that people have an infinite attention span if you are entertaining them. Hey, he's kept us from channel surfing for several decades, and now he's making more millions as a Las Vegas headliner. With money and attention so scarce now, effective communication skills have never been more important, especially if you're looking for work. So choose every single word as though it was the last word the person you're speaking to will hear. Otherwise, it might be. Avoid redundancies such as added bonus, advance warning, end result, prior history, or personal belongings. And avoid cliches like the plague. Just kidding. For more tips, hit survivalspeech.com. I'm Holland Cook. Did you know that you can listen to and watch Free Talk Live during our live show seven days a week from 7 to 10 p.m. Eastern via our studio cam at cam.freetalklive.com? Not only that, but you can also chat with other listeners at the same time. Do I need to mention that both the studio cam and chat room are totally free? Outside of Free Talk Live's live hours, you won't see a cam feed, but we'll hear audio from the Liberty Radio Network. So listen, watch, and chat all free at cam.freetalklive.com. That's cam.freetalklive.com. 
This Your Family Today tip is brought to you by Nestle Toll House Refrigerated Cookie Dough. Who would you bake some love for? Find fun and easy baking ideas at tollhouse.com. Kids love doing arts and crafts projects, especially when you join in. Try channeling all that artistic energy into the kitchen and bake up some creative treats together. Think of your art supplies as the frosting, sprinkles, and decorating gels, and use cookies or cupcakes as your canvas. For more tips like these, visit us at parenthood.com slash yourfamilytoday. Do you love Twitter? Make sure you favorite the LRN.FM Twitter account so you can receive our tweets at twitter.lrn.fm. That's twitter.lrn.fm. This is Free Talk Live. You can call in, bring up what is on your mind, 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. In studio tonight, it's Daryl. Derek J. And Danica. And we've been talking about this study that was done by University of Illinois Communications Professor Travis Dixon and some of the breakdowns that were done. And let, let me just sort of go back over some of these. Uh, he found that... Muslims were much more likely to be represented in U.S. news as domestic terror suspects at 81% of those news stories referencing someone who's a Muslim, whereas well, uh, FBI crime data shows that only 6% of domestic terrorist suspects were actually Muslim. It, that's over my head a little bit. That those when I hear numbers like that, I start to just my eyes glaze. It feels like high school, and I'm, I'm hearing a teacher speak in front of a projector. What what do those numbers mean? So when the mainstream media, or specifically the news programs that were observed, were from ABC, CBS, NBC, PBS, CNN, Fox News, yeah, MSNBC, and Univision, right? Uh, the Shows that they have that deal specifically with breaking news. Right. So we're not talking about uh, Bill O'Reilly yeah. or, or, you know, or like any entertainment of the other this week or talking something. Talking yeah. head sort of shows, just the right. breaking news shows. Yeah. When they talk about domestic terrorists uh -huh. or domestic terrorist suspects, 81% of the time they're talking about someone who is a Muslim. I wonder where Whereas they Whereas only 6%. Okay. of actual domestic terrorist suspects in the United States are Muslim. Whoa. Okay, so this is... So it's I get 75 it. percentage points higher yeah. as being reported in the news than in reality. Which is also... Wait, is that also like 10 times as many? It's because uh, it's you said it's about 6% of the occurrences, but it's like 60% of the... 81%, 81 oh my of God. the news stories. Wow, that is just So insane. it's That's seven and a half times. times okay. Higher. Oh, all right. Well... So who's giving them this info? I get the impression that a lot of mainstream news who do like breaking news, like this just this piece of paper just handed to me now. Like where did that piece of paper come from and is it from the White House? I, I highly doubt that it's actually from the White House. But you know what I'm getting at. Like is is it vetted by FedGov, the federal government? Do do is this does mainstream media get filtered through the government? I, I would not say that it does. I would say that a lot of the mainstream media, it's lazy reporting. Well, who's got this bias? So one person will break a story. Yeah. And then everybody else will see that story. Yeah. And then they just report and parrot the same thing. It's a journalistic so retweet. It, it's basically a journalistic retweet, but what I call lazy reporting. Yeah. So, so it, but, it would be akin to me putting a headline on freekeen.com and then you putting the headline on DerekJ.me and then somebody else putting the headline on the Free Thought Project where right. nobody's actually you know investigating the story. They're just rehashing the story without doing any sort of legwork. They want to be that. the first ones to break the news. Yeah, that's very valuable. That drives the traffic and pays the bills. But I, what I'm getting at is who's the first person to post those stories? Like, 
If this the, is the breaking study news, didn't show which one of the outlets yeah, but was the first. We can speculate. First. We're intelligent people here, or we can pretend to be. Who's who is the one who's filtering these stories? Who creates these talking points? Is it the CEO at the top of these media organizations? Do they talk to each other? Do they say, "Hey, we're going to report these Muslim stories," or do they just say, "This is what." pays the bills. This is what drives the traffic. People want to hear stories about these Muslim extremists. It's probably they the latter in. of this is what pays the bills. This is what people want. Give the people what they want. So what does that it, tell us about it's, ourselves? It's the whole thing of if it bleeds, it leads. Yeah, but it's not just if it bleeds, it leads. It's if it's Muslim, it leads. Right, because that eventually leads to blood because then the White House is going to order somebody to go fly a mm. remote control helicopter right. and drop a bomb on somebody so yeah. that "Quote unquote," they, you know, get what they deserve. Yeah, I just I look in myself and I see a bias. I recognize that I when I see the Muslim extremist thing, I'm I'm one of those Americans who says, "Oh God, another one of these," and that's not fair. And I'm trying to correct that. I'm trying to adjust and see reality. But I also want to figure out, where did this bias come from? I don't hate Muslims. It's not like I uh, grew up anti-Muslim or anything. So was I fed propaganda that made me feel this way? Or, Most likely. And, well, and where just, did just that originate? Because it's been, what, 13 years since the 9-11 attacks. Right, right. And you know, never forget, Derek, never forget. Yeah, what they did to us. Even though the yeah. they was allegedly nineteen hijackers, right? Not you know some guy currently living in Yemen, or Pakistan, or Afghanistan, yeah. but you know they need to be punished for what nineteen people did. Well, okay. So I, to be fair, I would say probably part of my bias comes from these stories where um, I'm seeing pictures of people in like sand and. Um, not having very much hygiene and pr practicing things like decapitating people. That's not very cool. In fact, I think that's probably ho like one of the most horrible things in the world. Right, and all of the so Muslims like, that I know denounce those activities. Yes, 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 they do. Uh, I, I agree with you. But also, I don't see Christians doing that. I don't see Hindus doing that. I don't see any other religion really doing that. Well, actually, I mean, to for the point on Hindus, I mean, I, you know, there have been, you know, Hindu men that have gone and, you know, raped women. You know, sure. Maybe not necessarily—I don't necessarily think that it's in any religion, but, you know, here they are practicing a supposedly peaceful religion, and here they are thinking that women are their property, women are below them, and yep. they can go and take them however they want. But they don't do that in the name of religion. Like, going into a cartoon a satirist place that drew Muhammad and killing a bunch of people, that's done in the name of religion. It's not just raping someone as a power crime. Hmm. Right, but— I, I would dare speculate that the vast majority of the, you know, quote unquote terrorists that are acting supposedly in the name of Islam, those people are not actually Muslims. Hmm. They are nominally Muslim in the same way uh -huh. that a large percentage of Americans, when asked on a questionnaire, will say, yeah, I'm a Christian. Right. But they couldn't necessarily tell you all of the tenets of the faith hmm. that they could probably, you know, point out. Uh, yeah, Jesus, uh, Christmas, Easter, uh, died on a cross, and Mary. So but they they couldn't, you know, tell you anything other than that. But they claim to be Christians. Most of the people in the U.S. military claim to be Christian. And they're killing people overseas, not in the name of Christianity, but in the name of America because God is on our side. So, you know, you do have, to some extent, Christians killing people yeah. and raping people because we know that there's a lot of soldiers that will rape people. Yeah, but it's not for their religion. That's the distinction that I'm making. There's no Christians going around saying, these people don't believe in Christ, and so I'm going to rape them. There's no. It's not a religious thing. There. I mean, it is. It's a. It's a state religious thing, but it's. It's not a Christian religion thing. Right. But th it's not that long ago in like the you know the time span of human history, the yeah. Crusades were not that long ago. Yeah. And I, horrible things were being done in the name of the Pope. Right. And if the Crusades were happening while we were broadcasting on this show, I would ask Christians to speak out against what's happening. I think similarly, like if I'm going to put any sort of responsibility here. 
I'm going to say, because look at this separate category that there was for Muslims in this right. in this study. There were no other categories for religion. Perhaps, maybe, it would be beneficial for Muslims who are not uh, crazy and, and um, killing people, which is the huge majority of them, to have a conversation, the uncomfortable conversation of like, well, who are these people who are doing this, and, and how do we um, make them stop? And I, I like, have seen— there... Christians would need to do the same thing if the Crusades were happening now. And this... Right, and th- there are— Post from some of the uh, Muslim for Liberty groups. Yeah, and they are doing that. And I'm not saying they're not. All the time, they're posting this question of, you know, why don't Muslims speak out? And they've they, got they do. dozens of photos of rallies yeah. where people are saying, you know, like, real Muslims don't kill. That's right. And they are speaking out. So I'm so not they saying they're not. they are speaking out. And they're doing it in large number, but for some reason, the mainstream media doesn't want to acknowledge that it's happening. Hmm. Yeah. And I think it's to drive the agenda of, you know, never forget that 19 people did this thing, so an entire billion people have to pay. Stay tuned. Hour number two is coming up after the news on Free Talk Live. Your calls, welcome, 855 450 free. DVD, books, music, instruments, periodicals, computers, software, electronics, photo, cell phone, office products, home and garden, bed and bath, furniture, kitchen, pet supplies, automotive, hardware, apparel, shoes, jewelry, grocery, healthcare, sports and outdoors, toys, games, used and more. It's a department store at your fingertips. Shop.freetalklive.com. Get all your shopping done, get a great deal, and a portion of your purchase goes to benefit Free Talk Live when you enter Amazon via shop.freetalklive.com. Nothing compares to a good cup of coffee. But if you're getting your coffee from the store, you're likely not getting a good cup of coffee. Free Talk Live's teamed up with BuzzBox to bring you a free pound of the best of the best coffee, shade-grown, organic, top 1% grade Arabica. But what's different is that for every 10 people that get coffee through our link, coffee.freetalklive.com, we can give another micro loan through Kiva. When the loan's paid, we lend the money again. Help others, one cup at a time, coffee.freetalklive.com. Are you a political activist who does things that the government might not like? Then this free ebook may save your life. Rats is your guide to protecting yourself against snitches, informers, informants, agents provocateur, narcs, finks, and similar vermin. Rats was written by OG libertarian Claire Wolf. Rats is a short book, easy to read, and available free in many formats. Download Rats free at rats-nosnitch.com. That's rats-nosnitch.com. The three most important things you can do for Free Talk Live are, one, share one episode a week on Facebook or in some other social networking site. Two, buy the things you buy online through shop.freetalklive.com. Three, give five bucks a month to the AMP program. You likely buy all kinds of things online. Amazon is the largest online retailer. You can get what you need at the same prices with free super saver shipping by going to shop.freetalklive.com. Please do your online shopping at shop.freetalklive.com. You're listening to the live edition of Free Talk Live. Hour number two is next after the news here on the Liberty Radio Network at LRN.FM. From Keene in the Shire, the Liberty Media Capital of the World, this is Daryl W. Perry, host of FPP Radio News for Friday, January 9th, 2015. Silver is trading at $16.35 per ounce. Gold is valued at $1,213 per ounce. And according to BitcoinAverage.com, the average price of Bitcoin is $285. Antiwar.com reports as recently as last week, the Obama administration was loudly trumpeting the Afghan war as being over. They'd been drawing down troops for months, making a huge deal of withdrawing the last of the U.S. Marines from the nation back in October. Much less publicized are this week's muted news releases, in which the Marine Corps is reporting plans to return to occupied Afghanistan for security operations. Throughout December, despite the claims of the war ending, Marines were carrying out training scenarios for the return to Afghanistan. Officials are, however, declining to say exactly when they'll return, how many there will be, or what they will be doing. NATO Commander General Philip Breedlove is giving the broadest strokes of it, however, telling Stars and Stripes that the American public needs to prepare itself for more U.S. casualties in Afghanistan, saying it will be unavoidable. 
For over 35 years, Roberts & Roberts has been a trusted source for buying and selling your investment-grade precious metals. They also take Bitcoin for precious metal purchases and permanently removed the minimum purchase order for all orders paid in the digital currency. Call Roberts & Roberts today for knowledgeable advice on investing and a forward-thinking approach to new technologies. 850-478-5270 or online at rrbi.co. Reuters reports Cuban dissonance said on Thursday that the nation had freed eight more detainees as Havana begins to release 53 people the United States considers political prisoners as part of an agreement aimed at ending decades of hostility between the two nations. Including the three detainees released on Wednesday, 11 prisoners have been liberated over the past two days. All but three of them are members of the dissident Patriotic Union of Cuba. Havana's commitment to free the 53 prisoners was a major part of a historic deal announced last month, under which the two governments agreed to renew diplomatic relations after more than 50 years. Like the detainees released on Wednesday, those freed on Thursday had been accused of relatively minor offenses. Lazaro Romero was arrested in 2012 and sentenced to four years behind bars on charges including making a public disturbance and threats apparently during a confrontation with police. Ernesto Rivera was given two years on the same charges. Another detainee freed on Thursday was Jose Manuel Rodriguez Navarro. Dissidents say he was detained in 2013 and sentenced to four years in prison allegedly for writing letters denouncing the Cuban government. You can support FPP Radio by shopping online. Whether you're looking for t-shirts, precious metals, bitcoins, or books, you'll find that and more at shop.fppradio.com. There's an Amazon shopping iframe built into the website, or you can shop directly from FPP with Bitcoin in the Bitcoin store. Every purchase you make from one of my affiliates at shop.fppradio.com helps fund FPP Radio. That's shop.fppradio.com. UPI reports President Barack Obama says he plans to propose making the first two years of community college free for everybody who's willing to work for it. The announcement was made in a video posted to the president's Facebook page on Thursday. He said he intends to discuss education in a visit on Friday at Polipsy Community College in Tennessee, as well as in his State of the Union address later this month. He said in the video, which was shot aboard Air Force One, I think everybody understands it is the key to success for our kids in the 21st century. We also have to make sure that everybody has the opportunity to constantly train themselves for better jobs, better wages, better benefits. He said he wants to make community college available for everyone, not just children, adding, What I'd like to do is see the first two years of community college free for everybody who's willing to work for it. It's something that we can accomplish and something that will train our workforce so we can compete with anybody in the world. Students who maintain a C-plus average, attend school at least half-time, and make steady progress towards a degree would qualify for the funding. The White House has not released details on how much the plan would cost, though the federal government would cover 75% of the cost, while states would be able to opt in to pick up the rest of the tab. This has been FPP Radio News, online at fppradio.com. The Dick Cheney Vice Presidential Library opens in a pitch-dark sulfurous underground cave, and a seedless watermelon is coming to grips with the fact it'll never be able to have kids. This is the Onion Week in Review. Following a litany of tragedies occurring over the past year, a report this week from scientists at Princeton University confirmed that 90% of the Earth's atmosphere is now made up of thoughts and prayers. Researchers confirmed that with the rise of tragic events occurring all across the world each and every day, the Earth's atmosphere is 7% nitrogen, 3% oxygen, and 90 percent emotional pleas begging for everything to be okay. In other news, a new study finds nothing that will actually convince you to change your lifestyle, so just forget it. UMass Dartmouth is beginning to regret offering a course in applied domestic terrorism, and a sparrow thinks it might have caught the bird flu after puking seeds all morning. Stay tuned after the video for a brief tear in the fabric of space-time, offering a glimpse at next week's Onion Review. And keep checking theonion.com for more. This is the Onion News Network. This is Free Talk Live, hour number two. You can call in with your thoughts, 
free in studio tonight. It's Daryl. Derek J. And Danica. And we have been talking for the most part about Muslims and Muslim extremists. And there was a new study that was done, or actually it wasn't a new, well, it, it kind of was a study of the news that was done by communications professor at the University of Illinois, Travis Dixon, where he found that Muslims were overrepresented in uh, news shows that deal specifically with breaking news than they actually were uh, to actually be suspects of domestic terrorism, according to the FBI. So 81% of the breaking news stories that dealt with domestic terrorists reported that the suspect was a Muslim, whereas only 6%, according to the FBI, only 6% of domestic terror suspects in the U.S. from 2008 to 2012 actually were Muslim. And we have Jesse calling in from Austin, Texas, and wants to talk about the over-representation of Muslims, or actually Muslim representation in the media. Jesse, you're on Free Talk Live. What's on your mind? Well, I was wondering if maybe the reason why they're over overrepresented in the media is actually how many of these media companies are owned by Muslims? And I'm guessing probably not very many. So maybe they're just Muslims are underrepresented in general. That makes a lot of sense. Yeah, I, I, I don't know if it necessarily follows that because Fox News and MSNBC and ABC and CBS are not owned by Muslims that they would then automatically portray Muslims to be terrorists. No, I don't think that either, but if I just noticed Al Jazeera wasn't in the list of things, right. uh, the news organization study. Right, because and the, the, the study, uh, Jesse, the study was dealing specifically with American news outlets, not foreign right. news outlets. Right. Yeah. Well, I bet you're right on. But there's no Muslim-owned companies, as far as I know, that are represented in the study so maybe that would make a difference how do you know jesse are you just assuming that abc isn't muslim no, or? well abc we, no. we don't really know disney do we company. It, yeah it's owned by disney well, which is a public company uh that you know anybody could buy stock in right. and you so know, no, the majority owners of disney are not muslim yeah i don't have any uh thing to substan- substantiate this i was just wondering this and maybe just putting that out there if one of you guys want to find out or but that was an idea that occurred to me yeah all interesting right. thought. thanks for the call jesse and derek there was something that you had mentioned off air about wanting to dive a little deeper into why even break stories down by race at all i don't know jog my memory what was my point uh well, so, something about you know race or the concept of race actually winds up dividing people instead of just looking at one another as oh, humans. Oh, yeah, yeah. Well, it's not weird. Like, so this story that you were reporting on, it makes me like a little uncomfortable when I hear like whites do this and blacks do that. I'm like, you know, that's just not how I was raised. I was raised in a super liberal environment where you're supposed to be colorblind and everyone's the same, all equal opportunity. And You know, I'm really down with that. But then the more I live my life and read these news stories, it seems to me that uh, the world isn't like that and that it is helpful to split humans into these categories of race. Why? I I don't know. Uh, Maybe it's just like a a cultural thing or or humans haven't been on the planet enough to intermingle. I I don't know why our races seem to be different, but uh, that seems to be the case. You you do have to admit that when looking for a suspect— it does help to know if the person that robbed you was male or female, tall or short, light skin, dark skin, somewhere in between. Yeah. So, you know, those things wind up going into crime reports. Yeah. That then are, you know, essentially public documents that anybody can look through 
and whoever has the time to calculate and determine these sorts of things. And we also know that the drug war winds up harming African Americans a lot more than it harms Caucasians. Yeah. That, you know, that there's a disproportionate amount of African Americans in jail for marijuana offenses, for other drug offenses, even though studies show that African Americans and white people use illegal substances at approximately the same rate. Okay. So, you know, it, it's one of these things. And some people would say that, you know, that proves the racism inherent in the system. I don't know if that's what it is or if it has to do with the fact that, for the most part, uh, poorer people are going to wind up being in jail regardless of race. And more of the poorer people happen to live in inner cities that are disproportionately African-American. Yeah, but it's not the inner city thing. I think the the thing about more black people being in um, prison or, or being part of the dependent class, this is going out on a reach, is because of the civil rights movement. Like, uh, that's sort of set in stone the way that culture was at the time. And I say this, of course, I'm speculating because I'm 25 years old. I wasn't around for the civil rights movement. Right. But from what I've read... It sort of froze in time, that dependency, and uh, it's just unfortunate that it seems like uh, the dependent classes, either black or white or no matter what their color, uh, never got to rise out of that because of this welfare state it created a lot of dependency on, on right. the state. Right, the, the uh, supposed war on poverty right, right. that yeah, has that's... actually seen more people in poverty than have gotten out of poverty. Yeah. So... Yeah, you know, that could certainly be part of it. Well, anyway, I just think it's weird when we talk about race because I was raised to think of people, you know, think <laughs> of us as colorblind. And then these mainstream reports uh, keep breaking us down by race. I really liked what, um, who was it, Morgan Freeman said about this when he was interviewed, you know, how do we end racism? And he was like, stop talking about it. Yeah, that's, that's it. Point. It's like, that's the end of it. Uh, it could be over today if you just stop talking about it. And uh, I want to get there. I want to get to that point. So I don't know how we can analyze the world and analyze the news without reference to these these things, uh, like skin color and like country of origin. But uh, I'd like to get to that point. Like, and that's the other thing about Muslim extremists. We use that term extremists to differentiate Muslims, the normal people, from Muslims, the 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 ones who use the religion to kill people. Right. And there needs to be some other word for that, uh, because I, I would hope that m Muslims, the sane, peaceful ones, would not allow their their brothers and sisters to use that that term uh, to to self describe. You you can't call yourself a Muslim, sir. Right. <laughs> that's and, what I would want the Muslims to say. Like you're killing people, and that's wrong. And uh, we started off by talking somewhat, uh, even though it was sort of tangentially about the uh, attack in Paris from a couple of days ago. And there was a story from antiwar.com, and I'll pull this up in just a little bit, that shows that there's actually evidence that the attack had more to do with the French foreign policy of intervening in Muslim countries than it did with actually responding to the cartoon. that The cartoon was just sort of the straw that broke the camel's back, but it was the French foreign policy of intervening in foreign countries. So basically, blowback. It's the same reason that you know, the quote-unquote, you know, they hate quote-unquote us because the U.S. military goes around killing people in the name of America and they're disproportionately killing people that are nominally Muslim. So there's more on that, including your thoughts, if you have any. 855-450-FREE. Here's a special message for those of you who owe the IRS at least 10000 or more in back taxes. 
the IRS has special programs in place that could eliminate or reduce your tax debt by thousands of dollars. Call the tax helpline that has been set up to help you. 800-691-6129. That's 800-691-6129. Stop the wage garnishments, levies, and tax liens now. Once you've qualified and enrolled, the IRS will stop all the collection activities against you. These unique programs have been allocated to help the economy and significantly reduce or eliminate your tax burden. The IRS is currently accepting reduced settlements and other favorable programs. You may qualify for substantial savings, so get the help you need. For free information and to see if you qualify, take down the number now for the Tax Representation Hotline. 800-691-6129. That's 800-691-6129. 800-691-6129. Gold. It's like nothing else on Earth. From the Romans through the Renaissance, from the Industrial Age to the Space Age, gold has weathered the test of time. For 6,000 years, gold has remained the ultimate store of wealth. According to the World Gold Council and the U.S. Mint, demand is at an all-time high. The stage is being set for the re-emergence of gold as the common-sense alternative to a fiat paper currency that gets weaker every day. Midas Resources is proud to offer the hard-hitting report that arms you with the truth you need to protect you and your family from the Fed's plans for your hard-earned money. Don't gamble with your future. Call Midas Resources today and ask for your free copy of As Good As Gold. Call 1-800-686-2237 for the report the Fed hopes you'll never see. As Good As Gold can be yours by calling 800-686-2237. If you have ever thought about owning gold, you must read this report. Call Midas today at 800-686-2237. Free Talk Live. Three-year-old child lost his arm after being viciously attacked by a pit bull terrier earlier this month. Gosh. Now the incident has moved a state lawmaker to author legislation that will effectively ban the pit bull breed in the entire state of Oklahoma. Wow. Wouldn't um, all of uh, Mr. Wesselhoff's constituents be a little safer if if we all just couldn't have any dogs at all? That's true. It would guarantee that no one would uh, be bitten by dogs. Right. And then in no cats. What about cats? They scratch people. They they do scratch people. And it... You know, there, it it's, it leaves a nasty infection. It could, certainly. It, it certainly. We should ban infections, too, while mm-hmm. we're at it. I mean, it, while we're protecting everyone from everything. Birds can carry the flu. We know yeah. that. You know, so. we should just exterminate all, all animals with teeth. <laughs> well, forget the teeth. <laughs> Birds have no teeth. I say we kill them all. Uh, just every animal. Yeah. Okay. What about insects? You could just sign a law that bans mosquitoes. <laughs> That'd be great. Free Talk Live, seven nights a week from 7 to 10 Eastern, live on the Liberty Radio Network at lrn.fm. If you want to know the latest about Free Talk Live before we go on the air, all you need to decide is how you want it delivered. It's your choice. Visit news.freetalklive.com. You can get emailed announcements and participate in contests via our email updates list. Plus, we have a Twitter account that you can follow and a Facebook page where you can become a fan. So visit news.freetalklive.com to get news about Free Talk Live as soon as it's announced and the way you want it delivered at news.freetalklive.com. That's news.freetalklive.com. If you want to move to the free state and you're looking for some real estate, well, I know a guy who's really great. It's the realtor Mark Warden. Do you want a home with 20 acres, a lakeside cabin, any takers for renters, buyers and sellers too? Mark Warden is the guy for you. PorcupineRealEstate.com Listen to LRN.FM on any phone, anytime. 213-493-0309. That's 213-493-0309. This is Free Talk Live. You can call in with your thoughts on why are Muslims overrepresented as terror suspects in American media or anything else. Coming up in just a little bit, Danica has a story about some towns that want to ban sledding, apparently. How can you do that? How can you ban sledding? Just because I got a concussion that one time when I was 12 is no reason to ban sledding or because my older brother totally ran into me on purpose with the sled let's all ban sledding but apparently there 
are some towns that want to do that. In studio tonight, it's Daryl. Derek J. And Danica. And there's just a little bit more on the story that somehow we got onto about the Paris killings. I've got a story here from antiwar.com from yesterday written by Jason Ditz. The whole world stood aghast as a pair of gunmen, angered by free speech itself, stormed into a satirical magazine mowing down cartoonists and writers who they saw as insulting Islam. Twelve were killed simply because of caricatures. Lots of people buy that story, just like a lot of people bought the idea that 9-11 was done because they hate us for our freedom. In both cases, the underlying context isn't examined too carefully. The truth, the truth of the matter is, France has gotten extremely aggressive militarily in recent years, engaging in multiple military interventions across Africa and the Middle East. The same week of the attack, French officials were beating the war drums in Libya. Blowback is a far more reasonable explanation for the sudden and violent attack in Paris. Charlie Hebdo may have been the convenient target, but many analysts agree that it was French foreign policy that was the real insider of violence. The deaths of the cartoonist has sparked a beautiful narrative around the involatility the inviolability of free speech and the price that must be paid to ensure freedom to future generations. Yet, ultimately, the attacks on offensive cartoonists are less about the cartoonists themselves than they are about the anger and desperation fueled by military intervention abroad. The lesson will be lost on many, of course, as the most convenient explanation is that the worst cases of terrorism are happening for their own sake. Yeah, well, how do we know? That just sounds like a, a an allegation without evidence. How do they know that... To, to some extent it is, but you can't deny that blowback exists. Yeah, but this there's no evidence that this is a case of blowback. That there's... What what would be what did, considered in a court of law circumstantial evidence? What's the circumstantial evidence that a cartoon headquarters uh, that that caused was just blowback? the convenient? No, the the cartoon headquarters was just the convenient target. Baloney. I don't find that the blowback. No, because, caused by the military intervention. Whose military intervention? The France. French military intervention. Then why didn't they go after a government building? Well, why did the terrorist on September 11th go after the World Trade Center instead of government buildings? It's my understanding there were some government offices in that building. Well, yeah, you you could make the argument that any large complex... Yeah, but this is, isn't is, that. I'm saying, look right. at the difference here. This, this, whoever there, wrote this article has their own bias, and they're saying, yeah, it's blowback. You know, I'm concerned about blowback too, but there's no evidence that this story has anything to do with what the French government is doing. This is a religious thing. This is you drew Muhammad, that's against my religion, I'm going to kill you. There's no like, oh, and also you're supporting horrible regimes, you're you're funding um militaristic governments in the Middle East. There's none of that. I, I would say that it's circumstantial. It's certainly not evidence that would hold up in a court of law, but you know, it, there, there's certainly a case to be made. Sure. I think it's weak. Probably. Danica, anything to add on this? You know, I had to say that they probably went into the Trade Center because it was, you know, obviously one of the tallest buildings in New York would get a lot of attention for that. Um, you know, the attacks in Paris, probably, you know, probably a religious thing for sure. I mean, it, it's just, it's unfortunate. It, it's, it's unfortunate regardless People just lose their lives over something so silly like that. Yeah. So tell us about these governments that want to ban sledding. <laughs> As we switch it from Islam to sledding, which is a... As a segue, should I tell the story about how I got a concussion sledding? Is it funny? Oh, it's very funny. Sure. So when, I'm when not I... amused by your pain. 
just I want to put that out there. I think it's tragic. Oh, I'm when very my amused get by hurt. all of, recounting all of the concussion stories. You've had so many. The, the story of how I almost got hit by a train is humorous. All right. So the uh, sledding concussion. Growing up in Alabama, there's not a lot of snow, and so when it does snow. There's really only one kid in the neighborhood that has a sled, so everybody goes to his house, and people take turns using the sled. We lived on the top of a hill, and all of the kids in the neighborhood are taking turns going down the back of the hill, not down the front. The front of the hill is where the driveways are, but for some reason, when it was my turn to go on the sled, someone suggested, let's push Daryl down the front yard and see if he can go up the neighbor's driveway across the street. Oh, of course. I was like, okay, sounds fun. How old were you at this point? 12, maybe. Okay, so you were still in that that, that dumb stage. Yes, I, I, I was definitely in the dumb stage. So I get pushed down the hill, and it's one of these saucer sleds, and it spun around, and as it spun around, it drifted to the left, and began going down my next door neighbor's driveway. Uh oh. There was a, an 85 GMC pickup parked in the driveway, and everybody starts <sighs> screaming. I'm going down backwards, so I see them, and I'm thinking, yeah, they're you know just excited about I'm going down the hill and oh, no. having fun. Oh, no. And the next thing I know, my head hits the front bumper. I get about halfway up under. The truck. Oh, my God. And they had to, like, drag me out. And I don't remember anything for, like, three days. Wow. Next thing I remember, there was no more snow. (laughs) So that's how Daryl got a concussion sledding. So tell me, why should it be illegal? Well, no. Because of stories like that. (laughs) (laughs) That's basically what the gist is about. But now that Daryl brought up a story about sledding, I want to share just a a very brief one. Not, Not that happened to me, but it happened to my sister. Um, myself, my two brothers, and my sister were all sledding. Um, my, our sister went down the hill, and we didn't realize this, but this hill that we were on had a bunch of rocks on it. And so she goes sledding down. All of a sudden, she goes flat. She hits a rock. I know I'm laughing. This is uh, horrible. You're horrible. Sorry, You're a bad sister for it's laughing. It's funny thinking about it now because the way that she went flying off the sled, not what happened next. So she goes flying off the sled, and we're all thinking, Oh, what happened? We look over, and she turns around, and her whole face is covered in blood. Oh, my God. Yeah, it was pretty gruesome. Thankfully, we got her home. She got to the hospital, got stitches. Happy ending. So when we come back, Danica will tell us why some town governments want to ban sledding because of horrible accidents that happened to Daryl and Danica's sister. And your thoughts? Have you ever gotten seriously hurt sledding? 855-450 free. Did you know by age 50, half of all men have an enlarged prostate? This means more urges to urinate, longer bathroom trips, waking at night to urinate, or issues with sex. If this sounds familiar, call us now, because we're shipping free bottles of Super Beta Prostate to listeners of this station. Super Beta Prostate is a non-prescription formula guaranteed to reduce the symptoms of your enlarged prostate. It's yours free. Pay only shipping and handling. Just call 1-800-881-1075. In clinical trials, the ingredient in Super Beta Prostate was shown to reduce urges to urinate, improve bladder emptying, reduce waking at night to urinate, and improve quality of life. This Super Beta Prostate free offer is for listeners of this station, but it won't last. Don't wait. Just call 1-800-881-1075. That's 1-800-881-1075. Call 1-800-881-1075. I've been told no in many different ways. I give you an order and you're going to obey it. Who told you to go this way? You can do that and you have to leave here. You cannot bring Simon to the rally. Walk with me. Well, I'm, I'm, no, I'm comfortable me. here, actually. Whoa, 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 whoa. Hey, whoa. hey, hey, hey. Who do you think you Excuse are? me. There is no video or audio allowed in this office. No, I have work today. This is you ain't gonna make. Wait, no. Wait a minute. Now. Wait a minute. Holy shit! Hey! Oh my God! Unbelievable! Why are you running from me? Because you're scared me. What am I being detained for? You're being served. What is this? You're being served. What is this? 
must have a funny way of telling people no. That's the sound of the men working on the chain. Derek J's Victimless Crime Spree. Watch it for free and order the Director's Cut DVD at VictimlessCrimeSpree.com. I'm Mark Stevens of the No State Project. And are you tired of governments murdering people around the world? Stop using their money. There is an alternative. Bitcoin is a stateless, free market, non-political currency. Bitcoin cannot be inflated or controlled by any government. By using their money, you're only helping the government. Stop doing it. You have an incredible alternative available right now. Learn it, use it, spread it. So get started with Bitcoin at WeUseCoins.com. That's WeUseCoins.com. Here's a chance to do a little activism while you're cruising Facebook, Twitter, or Google+. Between the LOL cats and the recipes, the hot girls, and the inspirational sunrise memes, Free Talk Live's post pass by your newsfeed. Like them. Comment. It gives us more exposure. If you don't see our posts, click like at Facebook.FreeTalkLive.com and then hover over it to click Get Notifications. It's an easy way to spread the ideas of liberty a bit further. I know you're busy but you can spare that tenth of a calorie it takes to click on something facebook.freetalklive.com attention have you been in a serious automobile accident then you need to call our attorneys now we specialize in helping our clients get compensated for major auto injuries if you've been in any type of car or motorcycle accident and you've been seriously injured you may be entitled to significant financial compensation our attorneys have recovered millions and millions of dollars for injured clients there are no out-of-pocket costs to you ever we only receive a fee when we win your case we are available 24 7. if you've been in an accident and been seriously injured make this free call to our attorneys attorneys now. Call the Personal Injury Center at 800-648-9173. 800-648-9173. 800-648-9173. That's 800-648-9173. This ad is paid for by participating member law firms. We are not an attorney referral service. Representation may not be you can interact with other LRN listeners in our message board at forum.lrn.fm. That's forum.lrn.fm. This is Free Talk Live, 855-450 free. That's the toll-free call-in line. You can call in, talk about whatever is on your mind. We've been talking about uh, Muslims and terrorism and how, at least in the U.S., on I, I would say on the major news outlets that deal with breaking news, that Muslims are actually overrepresented as domestic terror suspects. We also talked briefly about the situation in Paris. And Danica will tell us in just a moment about the move to ban sledding. But Derek has something important to tell you. If you value your online privacy, you need ProXPN. What is ProXPN? ProXPN is a global virtual private network that allows all of your online data to be encrypted. Your internet service provider is likely saving your surfing history. How does that make you feel? Without ProXPN, everything you do online is available for review. Simply download an app for Windows, Mac, iOS, or Android, even Linux, though setup is a little different for Linux. Then just connect to the internet and you're protected from all of that. No more prying and spying. One account works for all your devices simultaneously. No need to have a separate account for each device. Just go to proxpn.com slash FTL and use the promo code FTL50 and you'll get 50% off an annual account. That's almost $5 a month. Though FTL50 will also get you savings for the lifetime of the account, no matter which premium account you go with. With the premium account, you get unlimited bandwidth. With servers all over the world to access, the ability to privately torrent, get past regionally blocked websites, and, this is important, ProXPN doesn't keep records of your online habits at all. You get all of that with a risk-free 7-day money-back guarantee. Go to ProXPN.com FTL. 
Use the promo code FTL50 and get a great discount on privacy that is priceless. So Danica will in just a moment tell us about the move to ban sledding. But first, you and your calls. Liberty Phoenix is calling in from the Skype. Liberty Phoenix, you are on Free Talk Live. Skype. Hey, guys. Um, I just had a couple quick comments on race that you guys were talking about earlier. Um, you know, I should say the race because there really is <laughs> only one race on the planet Earth, and that's the human race. Yes. Everything else is culture. You know, all the little different borders and barriers that we create in our minds – are just created out of culture. They don't really exist. There's no difference between human beings. Some have yes, more there is. Have less than and... There What's is a that? difference. There are differences. There's. We're all different. Thank goodness. Well, besides like fingerprints well, and stuff. Well, right? by, by by by. There's no differences. I mean that as, um, as far as like dehumanizing. You can't you can't create these barriers between between our you know each other in our minds because it will allow us to dehumanize one another and that has always always led to really really terrible things happening um that's why like whenever whenever anybody starts dogging the police or, or saying how much they hate them or how much they they, they want to kill them I, I try and i try and you know bring them back from that little brink like you know you don't want to dehumanize the police they're still humans too they're victims of a system that has created these imaginary borders in their minds where they get more powers than other people. It's all culture. It's all created from a culture of law enforcement or a culture of inner city uh, a thug life or a culture of high class, you know, East Coast money. It, that's the only thing that really creates the borders and the races that we perceive. The, there's no such thing as races. There's only one. I don't know. I disagree with that. I mean, do you have any evidence for that? You're um, saying that there, the people, DFA, there's only one race. I mean, poetically, I get your point. Yeah, we're all one race, but there's clearly differences between them. And the, but those differences are cultural. They're not racial. What, what do you mean by that? You, can have, like, you, can have, you don't think there are genetic differences between races? I mean, have you seen the NFL, the NBA? Uh, can you not well, detect there, there are differences between the, between there, the races? There certainly are differences. Of Some skin tones are darker. Some are lighter. Uh, you know, some people ha- are genetically predisposed to be more athletic, yeah, etc., uh, etc. Cetera, et cetera, but that does not mean that there are different levels of human. We're all humans. Yeah, exactly. Human is the race. Amen. It's the human. It's yeah. not you know the black ways. Yeah, right, I don't the dispute that. Race. I hope it didn't sound like I was saying that's not true. Like that would sound no, I, that would I, be horrible. I I, I I I acknowledge that there's differences between uh, different cultures that have you know grown in different parts of the world. And yeah, but it's not just culture. Don't you think it's genetic as well? I mean, clearly, if if we could see differences in our skin and that's genetic, genetic, aren't there differences say in other? I'd say it's epigenetic. I wouldn't say it's genetic. It's epigenetic. What it's, meaning? It's, more, uh, uh, it's like the. It's not generated from the inside it's more from the outs from an external forces that have created that genetic difference oh come on skin color isn't one of those skin color isn't epigenetic it's clearly genetic so you don't think there are other qualities but uh, that are different between the races that are just genetic the people that have darker skin generally tend to live closer to the equator i've never seen any dark-skinned eskimos true so that's that's external factors uh, right, you and, know, creating those genetic. But that would really only epigen- place a difference in where they live, not necessarily in hold, anything hold else. On. Let, let let me sort of try and be the uh, bridge between these two sort of conflicting thought patterns. Yeah, that you know, the people with darker skin do tend to live closer to the equator. The equator. People with people- lighter skin and blonde hair generally tend to live in the Scandinavia region. And because of hundreds of years of, you know, basically different genetic breeding, inbreeding, there are going to be some other differences that wind up happening. And, you know, that that does not make one group of people more human or less human. It just means that the genes have been sort of specialized for certain things. Right. 
I'd say it, if if we have to give it a li- any type of label, g- give it a, a breed. There's different types of breeds of dogs. Dogs are a race, I guess. A you breed know. of human. Breed, okay. Breed All of right. human. Okay. So, so people, and, and it's okay to be breedists. If you want to stay with your breed and not interact with other people, that's fine. You can Hold be on. a breedist. Le- Liberty but, Phoenix, no. can, can I? That sounds really. Can weird. I make a suggestion that you use the word ethnicity instead of breed because? Saying that there are different breeds of human, it it sort of seems to take the humanity out yeah. of human. Yeah, it really feels weird being called a breed. I guess that does dehumanize. Yeah, human. I, I, I think. <laughs> you know, the, 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 I I agree with the point that you know there's only one race and it's the human race, but there are certainly dif- different ethnicities, and you know, hopefully within you what? know. I, I know it's not going to happen within my lifetime, but, you know, hopefully within a couple hundred years, those ethnicities sort of start to, you know, fade away as there's more of sort of a globalization of humanity and this intermingling of the various ethnicities. Well, I think that's what could actually help solve it is the, the more intermingling, the more cooperation and, you know, more market interactions that all the people on the earth have the more understanding that we'll all have of each other's different cultures and then the more accepting we'll be we won't have to judge people based on superficial cultural uh identity you know factors or whatever like if i if i'm wearing a hoodie and sagging that doesn't necessarily mean that i'm not a a ceo of a company yes it does no unless the company is uh sean puffy daddy combs company it was puffy wears a suit it was puffy daddy yeah actually right yeah puffy wears a suit so your example is ridiculous ceos don't wear hoodies and sag their pants he's got you on that liberty phoenix thanks for the call your thoughts welcome 855 450 free that's 855 450 3733 It's the end of year clearance sale at Lumber Liquidators. We'd rather sell it than count it. So every floor and every store is on sale and it all must go. Get incredible deals on first quality flooring from just 35 cents a square foot. Beautiful three quarter inch pre-finished solid hardwood is just $179. Save even more on all liquidation clearance and closeouts. If it's in stock, it's on sale and pay no interest until January 2017. Don't miss these end of year deals on over 400 floors. Visit LumberLiquidators.com to find a store near you. Times are different than they were when GEICO started saving people money over 75 years ago. Everybody takes photos of their food nowadays. You can bet none of us kids would snap pictures of mom's tuna casserole surprise. To this day, we don't know what the surprise was, nor do we want to. We didn't always have tasty food, but we always had great car insurance with GEICO. GEICO, saving people money on car insurance for over 75 years. The knowledge of the ancients, tried and true, trusted herbs and extracts fused with the latest nutraceutical science. Introducing the all-new Ancient Defense Herbal Immunity Blend, crafted with over 14 key ancient herbs and extracts to supercharge and prepare your body for what experts admit is the most dangerous season of the year. We have rejected hundreds of other formulations in our quest to bring you what is simply the most powerful and comprehensive proprietary formula that we have ever created in the realm of herbal immunity. For the last two years, our team has been working with top doctors, nutritionists, and chemists to develop the ultimate nutraceutical formulation. Experience the benefits of combining over 14 ancient herbs and extracts with exciting new advances in nutraceutical science. Now is the time to secure ancient defense for you and your family. Visit ancientdefense.com or call 888-253-3139. That's ancientdefense.com. Free Press Publications is an independent alternative media and publishing company founded in June 2009 with the mission of ensuring a free press for the freedom movement and is committed to spreading the message of peace, freedom, love, and liberty. FPP also gives new authors an avenue for publishing freedom-oriented material. 
FPP brings you daily news and commentary on the website fpp.cc, as well as a daily five-minute newscast, FPP Radio News, and weekly news, views, and commentary in the FPP Freedom Minute and Peace, Love, Liberty Radio at fppradio.com, and the monthly newspaper, FPP News at news.fpp.cc. Find FPP online at fpp.cc. That's fpp.cc, as in Creative Commons. So you've heard all three hours of the latest episode of Free Talk Live, and you're still hungry for liberty-oriented audio content? Did you know that we have another 24-7 audio stream at lrn.fm? The Liberty Radio Network airs the latest episodes of some of the best liberty-oriented podcasts on the internet, around the clock. In addition to recorded content, you'll also hear live shows like Free Talk Live, originating from our Keene, New Hampshire studio. So listen anytime at lrn.fm. That's lrn.fm. Liberty activists around the country are starting to realize politics alone won't set us free. So what will? At Liberty on the Rocks, we believe the answer starts with living your principles, spreading ideas, and connecting with those around you. By starting a Liberty on the Rocks network, you can make a difference by uniting libertarian thinkers. Find out how much fun it is to build your local network from the ground up. Visit libertyontherocks.org today to get started. If you enjoy LRN.FM, please contribute to your favorite shows via their websites and become an amplifier at amp.lrn.fm. That's amp.lrn.fm. Eight fifty-five, four fifty, free. That's the toll-free call-in line where you can. Call in, talk about what's on your mind. In studio tonight, it's Daryl. Derek J. And Danica. And Danica is finally going to get around to telling us about some towns that want to ban sledding. Oh, the horror. The Tell art- us about that. Yeah, the article is from Liberty, LibertyBritzKrieg.com. Uh, a winter wonderland of fear. Cities across the U.S. moved to ban unregulated sledding. So... This moves along the same lines of airport security lines, um, keeping your shoes off, um, preventing parents from having their kids walk a few blocks to school alone. So it's just another one, another one of those movements, I suspect. But it's winter here in the northern hemisphere, which means that countless hordes of children and their parents are excited to engage in that timeless pursuit of a youthful seasonal pleasure, sledding. Many of us who grew up in colder climates have gone sledding at least once or twice. Yeah, it can be dangerous at times, but so are many of the other activities young, rambunctious kids partake in. That's like kind of the point. It's the the fun of rushing down this mountain. You might get hurt. Somebody else might get hurt. And you know what? Kids, Hold on. Walking outside in the snow, you might get hurt. You yeah. might slip on the ice because someone forgot to put some salt on there. Ooh, yeah, but big deal. But you don't have to go sledding to get to work. Like you have to go outside to get to work and do your life. But like sledding is a frivolous activity that just involves some danger. But it's fun to be dangerous sometimes. Right. But my point is everything is dangerous. Life is dangerous. Yeah. Well, well, I'm certainly. cutting in too early. What's what's the rest of this? Well, I mean, if you want to stay cooped up all winter, you certainly can. But where's the fun in that? you got to go outside and you know, live a little bit. So uh, the Associated Press reported earlier this week from Des Moines, Iowa, anyone who has grown up around snow knows that part of the fun of sledding is the risk of soaring off a jump or careening around a tree. But faced with a potential bill from sledding injuries, some cities have opted to close hills rather than risk large liability claims. Hmm. Okay, hold on. So this sounds more like they're just trying to prevent people from sledding on government property. They're not going to prevent people from sledding completely. No, I heard something different here, Daryl. I heard that their socialistic system of taking care of people when they show up at the emergency room is what's causing the pressure to uh, stop Perhaps sledding. there have been too many complaints that, oh, there's too many people coming in here for injuries and it's costing you know, everyone, everyone's insurance and all these crazy bills to go up. Okay. It's a problem See, of what, socialism, what I, not a problem of freedom. Right. right. What I was thinking was more akin to people sledding on government property getting hurt, and then suing the city. It sounds like great activism. Okay, and Dubuque, I'm, I'm joking. 
In Dubuque, Iowa, the city council is moving forward with the plan to ban sledding in all but two of its 50 parks. Okay. So I, it sounds like that they want babysitters at okay, two of those but parks. It, it's still, they, they want to shut it down on government property, not on private. Yeah. Let's see. If, Maybe they yeah. should have like... Uh, Crossing guards, or what do they have? Lifeguards at pools. They should have uh, government-sponsored lifeguards for sledding. Oh, yeah. That's, that's a great <laughs> idea. We have all kinds of parks that have hills on them, says Maria Ware, Dubuque's Legislator Services Manager. We can't manage the risk at all of those places. In Omaha, the city banned sledding at a popular hill as a test one winter after losing a lawsuit, but decided to allow it again after most people ignored the restriction. Good. Yeah, good for that. It is impractical, Assistant City Attorney City Attorney Tom said. People wouldn't abide by the ban. Instead, the city has posted signs warning of sledding risks, and workers at the site of the failed ban put pads around posts and hay bales around trees. Yeah, because people just wouldn't know that sledding is dangerous. That's yeah. like one of those like caution: coffee is hot. Like, okay, thanks, Mister Obvious. It's like yeah. okay, well, that's something you just you know of, and you know before you know it, something is going to come whacking in your face that reminds you yeah so uh we will pick up the sledding ban discussion here in just a bit but back to the phone calls terry calling from nashua new hampshire listening to wsmn terry you're on free talk live what's on your mind no it is perry as in como oh hey what's going on not much, not much. In reference to that last call before you had a station break, yes. uh, yep. we are one race. Yes, it's, we are human. But because of wherever we are here in New England, we're here in New Hampshire, me and you, you are, what, about 60 miles away from me. It's all good. In Keene, we had five below zero, so maybe our biology was changed in a way so that we can deal with the five below and then going to 100 degrees in the summertime where people on the equator, it, but we are all the same. Makes sense. Right. So, you know, there, yeah, there certainly are some is. genetic differences, and I don't think that anybody is denying that. But even though there are genetic differences, we're all still equally human. I would agree. I mean, we're all yes, we are. we're all going to be unique in our own different way, which is you know, woo, exciting. But I mean, we're still human. I mean, I you know am no more less a human than you are, Daryl, or, or even you, Derek. I mean, I don't consider myself any higher or below you guys as far as status is concerned. No, no, no. It is I still bleed red, and these people on the other side of the rock that we call the Earth is. They're killing people in the name of, and then they can go and have forever lasting life because I kill you because you don't believe in what I say. It's I don't understand that part of the physiology. You know, their brain is really they're brainwashed. It's too many people are dying because of something, and we don't have to. It's all good. It's we all bleed red. It's we were all born from our mothers. It's all right. Yep. Thanks for the call, Perry. So, Danica, uh, let's get back to the uh, sled ban thing that's going on. Sure, absolutely. So, there have been courts in Nebraska that have decided cities must protect people, even if they make poor choices. Uh, so it says here the above seems a, like a bit more reasonable response than an outright ban. Most people realize that cities must restrict potentially dangerous activities to protect people and guard against costly lawsuits, says Kenneth Bond, a New York lawyer who embraces local governments. In the past, people might have embraced a Wild West philosophy of individuals being solely responsible for their actions, but now they must expect government to prevent dangers whenever possible. Yeah, it, it sounds definitely like there's the sort of nanny state sort of thought behind this of we have to protect you from you because you might do something that winds up harming you and 
therefore we must protect you from yourself. I don't see why there's such a problem with putting warning signs. Warning, the snow may cause you to slip and fall. That's common knowledge, or at I least know. it should be common knowledge. Just like <gasps> coffee is hot should be common knowledge. For anyone over, oh, I don't know, say five years old. Like, even... if you're ordering coffee, you know it's hot. How many cities have already banned sledding, Danica? Uh, right now, they're really focusing on a couple of the cities here in the Midwest. So they've, uh, they've talked about Omaha, um, shutting down a couple of the parks, and he, uh, Dubuque, Iowa as well. So Dubuque, Iowa has uh, banned sledding from all but two of its 50 parks. So I guess they only have the resources to babysit two parks. Hmm. Yeah, and again, it, it sounds to me as though they're only preventing the sledding on the government property. It's not an all-out ban on sledding. So if you you know have property and you want your kids to go sledding down your front hill, there's not going to be the sledding police that come and arrest you and your kids for sledding on your private property. Oh, thank goodness. Okay, I was a little confused about that. Thanks for clearing but there's that not up. Really whole lot of i mean I, I guess it really depends on the housing but there's not really a lot of fun and excitement in sledding in your own yard i mean granted yes you know depends every, on the yard again you, i agree you know every yard is different but the majority of the fun comes from going to a park where there are going to be lots of hills where there are going to be a good amount of space of people to go and have fun together i don't know about you guys but we went to a private hill when i grew up we had a neighbor who had a huge backyard and um had a you know big uh hill that went down and all of the neighbor people even random people from other towns would come by for this huge property and the little old lady who lived there would let anyone basically sled there it was a huge legal liability for her i mean could you imagine people could have gotten hurt they could have sued but that never happened at least uh not to this day she's in her like her 90s or something still allows it yeah. and that that's what could be the solution for these people yeah and where i grew up again birmingham alabama you don't get snow a lot so when it does snow all of the roads are closed nobody's yeah. driving anywhere you can only That's go true. sledding where you can walk and that was you know pretty much in the yard that i where my house was and the next door neighbors because we were at the top of a hill get to know your neighbors and sledding can't be banned yeah 855 450 free call it hour three next Free Talk Live has partnered with Amazon, the largest internet retailer. Imagine a department store category, and Amazon has it. Books, electronics, office products, furniture, jewelry, automotive, toys, clothing, sporting goods, and dozens of other categories. Now you can shop and support Free Talk Live by entering Amazon through our website. Go to shop.freetalklive.com, and Amazon will send us a portion of your purchase. You're going to do the shopping anyway, so remember to enter through our site at shop.freetalklive.com. That's shop.freetalklive.com. Kay Oliver is part of the Toyambe Women's Group in Jinja, Uganda. She gets old clothes, fixes them up, washes them, and then sells them at the Jinja market. She was quite happy with her success at her business, but realized that a sewing machine would really help her make more money to take care of her two kids. Free Talk Live helped her get that sewing machine. You can help us help more people by getting your coffee through coffee.freetalklive.com. Make a difference, one cup at a time. Get a free pound, try out the subscription, cancel at any time, coffee.freetalklive.com. Shiny badges on your jacket. Shiny badges. This is Davi Barker from ShinyBadges.com, and I just want to personally apologize for airing a jingle week after week, month after month, that turned out to be such an infectious brain worm. So to make it up to you, I'm offering a free gift. The next time you make a purchase at ShinyBadges.com, write worms in the transaction comments, and I'll send you something weird. Free Talk Live has partnered with Amazon, the largest internet retailer. Imagine a department store category, and Amazon has it. Books, electronics, office products, furniture, jewelry, automotive, toys, clothing, sporting goods, and dozens of other categories. Now you can shop and support Free Talk Live by entering Amazon through our website. Go to shop.freetalklive.com, and Amazon will send us a portion of your purchase. You're going to do the shopping anyway, so remember to enter through our site at shop.freetalklive.com. That's shop.freetalklive.com. You're listening to the live edition of Free Talk Live. Hour number three is next after the news here on the Liberty Radio Network at LRN.FM. This is the Liberty Beat, your daily source for Liberty news and activist updates online at thelibertybeat.com. 
I'm Brian Hagan with your Liberty Beat for Friday, January 9th, 2015. Gold is trading at $1,211, silver at $16.44, and Bitcoin is trading around $297.96. Today's precious metal price is brought to you by Midas Resources Incorporated, helping clients convert their paper 401ks and IRAs to solid gold and silver. Get their 10 Reasons book free by calling 800-686-2237. That's 800-686-2237. The Liberty Beat is sponsored by eFoods Direct, redefining the way you think about storable food. With civil unrest occurring all across the country, being food secure has never been more important. Visit eFoodsDirect.com slash Liberty Beat or call 800-620-5520 to learn more about food security in a time of crisis. In the news, on Thursday, a bill to approve the construction of the Keystone XL oil pipeline passed another barrier in the Senate. The Senate Energy Committee approved the measure with a 13 to 9 vote. The bill will go before the full Senate next week, while the House of Representatives is scheduled to vote on Friday. A federal judge in California has overturned a ban on the sale of controversial foie gras, duck or goose liver, which has been fattened through force feeding. Foie gras involves deliberately fattening the animals by force feeding corn through a feeding tube. U.S. District Judge Stephen V. Wilson permanently blocked the state attorney general from enforcing a law which banned the practice. Judge Wilson made his decision based on the argument that the federal government's authority trumps the states. Activists from across the political spectrum are organizing a global day of action against the use of torture on January 31st. In response to a lack of media coverage and action from politicians following the release of the Senate report on CIA torture, a number of organizations are calling for rallies and protests across the globe to stand in solidarity with victims of torture. The Anti-Media, the Conscious Resistance Network, the Solutions Institute, and a growing list of activist groups and media outlets are joining the calls for action. Several cities are planning on hosting mock waterboarding and force feeding presentations. Today's broadcast of Liberty Beat is made possible by Central Texas Gunworks, your online source for firearms, firearm accessories, and ammunition. They take major credit cards and now accept Bitcoin. Visit them online at shop.centraltexasgunworks.com. Did you know you can support the Liberty Beat when shopping on Amazon.com? Just log into your account after clicking our Amazon affiliate link at libertybeat.com slash Amazon. This is the Liberty Beat for Friday, January 9th, 2015. Check out the website at thelibertybeat.com. The accused operator of the Deep Web Silk Road Marketplace is set to go to trial. Catherine Bleich has this Liberty Beat special report. Many of you know that in late 2013, the online Bitcoin black market known as the Silk Road was shut down. The alleged founder, Ross Ulbricht, was arrested and charged with conspiracy to traffic drugs, launder money, and even murder for hire in the state of Maryland. This month, he will go on trial for many of these charges in the state of New York. The Liberty Beat is pleased to announce that we will be there to report live from the courtroom the entire first week. With a generous donation from Roger Ver, also known as the Bitcoin Jesus, the Liberty Beat's Derek Bros is one of several activists who have been funded to travel to New York to serve as our eyes and ears. We hope to also send the Liberty Beat's founder and editor-in-chief, John Bush. The two plan to work in tandem as they live blog the courtroom actions, write narrative pieces, interview key people, and create audio media. Help us send our amazing team into the belly of the beast to document this historic trial by visiting thelibertybeat.com backslash support. You can expect the mainstream media to only paint a small part of the picture. Let the Liberty Beat bring you the truth. To learn more about Ross and his case, visit freeross.org. Today's edition of the Liberty Beat is sponsored by My Magic Mud, detoxifying tooth powder, the most effective and affordable dental care around. Get a 150 application jar at mymagicmud.com. Want to reach tens of thousands of like-minded listeners every day with your messenger product? The Liberty Beat is looking for sponsors for their daily news service. Support this grassroots media project while expanding your reach to a targeted market. To find out more, visit libertybeat.com backslash advertise. This is the Liberty Beat for Friday, January 9th, 2015. I'm Brian Hagan reporting, reminding you, spread liberty with a smile.
A new Gallup poll found that the GOP has an overwhelming advantage among young people who look like old men. The poll shows Republicans hold a solid lead among the coveted elderly youth demographic, including 18 to 24 year olds who wear suspenders and bow ties to class every day. I'm joined by Republican strategist Rob Powell. These are pretty encouraging numbers for the GOP, aren't they? Yeah, of course, it's very encouraging. Millennials who look like they're permanently dressed for boat trips are a rapidly growing segment of the population. And according to the survey, the prematurely aged are are also very politically active. Absolutely. Only about 20% of young people vote overall, but there's almost 100% turnout among youth that dress like a dad from a 1950s sitcom. Now, what about the criticism that the GOP only appeals to white men? Not true. We also have a lot of support among sorority girls that wear pantsuits and pearls, paunchy Chinese college students, and we're making inroads among African-American ham radio enthusiasts. This is the Onion News Network. Kicking off our number three, this is Free Talk Live in studio tonight. It's Daryl, Derek J, and Danica. And we've been pretty much all over the map. Began the show talking about a Seattle cartoonist who has been in hiding for four years after creating Draw Muhammad Day. And then we talked a good bit about Muslims and terrorism be it domestic or foreign and then miss danica told us about uh some possible bans on sledding in the midwest sounds more akin to they're trying to prevent it on government property or at they're least being a in, nanny in states so speak. in uh government parks so it's not an all-out ban on sledding so that's somewhat good and you can call in on those or any other topic that's on your mind 855 450 free that's 855 450 3733 and we go to Skype where Abel is calling in on Skype username lrn.fm Abel is somewhere in New Hampshire Abel go ahead you're on free talk live I am somewhere in New Hampshire. Good to uh, speak with you, Daryl and Danica. Uh, and uh, is there three of you or just two? Uh, Derek J is and here. Derek. Oh, Derek, I'm sorry, Derek. The oh, triple D is here. Yes. <laughs> hey, listen, so, um, you know, we have a couple things on the table. The uh, French uh, uh, terrorist attack on, uh, on our... Uh, 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 media in, uh, in in France and and uh, you know auspiciously for you know saying bad things about Muhammad or you know drawing bad things and, and printing bad things and yeah it's and actually uh, because there was a cartoon depicting Muhammad uh, it does not say in what way Muhammad was depicted. But one of the teachings of Islam is that you do not draw Muhammad. And right. it's actually, it's one of the teachings of Judaism. And supposedly one of the teachings of Christianity is that you're not supposed to make a graven image of the Lord of any right. kind. But yet Christianity is it the Lord seems or other to gods deviate before the Lord? from that. Uh, actually, the uh, in the Ten Commandments, it says, do not uh, make graven images of the Lord or any other gods. Hmm. I thought it was because just Because no gods. one knows what, you know, if there is only one God, no one knows what he or she looks like. It's so like you're a golden not supposed calf. to, you know, try to depict that because there's no way to, you know, put into an image the perfection that is the Almighty. So... It seems, though, that Christianity has wavered from that, and it's something that is certainly not enforced, but it is a teaching of the three major religions uh, you know, that, that are out there. 
but it, it's something that yeah. does seem to be a lot more strongly enforced by the Muslims. Uh, continue with your thought, Abel. I thought this was my call, though. Um, anyway, uh, the my take on it, on, on a lot of things, is you've got to look back and you've got to, you know, understand the history of governments across the globe and, you know, what's their purpose. And the purpose of governments across the globe is to uh, amass power and control. Uh, you know, almost all the people that end up in governments and uh, those that are above them as well that uh, that like to work from behind the scenes are, are, are I think, uh, psychopaths. I think that they're a bunch of sick folk. And, uh, you know, the, the more up the ladder you are, the more sick you are. And uh, and so they don't care about people. Uh, they're they're invested in power, and uh, and their their governments are are a way of amassing power, and in order to amass power, you have to uh, foment uh, dissatisfaction. You can't have human beings all getting along, and uh, and then have a real need for government as time goes on. Uh, you know, and people are, you know, getting a little smarter as time goes on, some of us anyways. And the fact is, is that they're, uh, you know, becoming aware of, you know, like the police in New York or anywhere else, Ferguson or, you know, what's going, why is all this stuff happening? And, and, and I say that there, there is, there are people that kind of set things up. You know, the, 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 the nature of religions. You know, these are not people making. There are individuals that, that you know, the Pope, uh, you know, the, the, uh, the upper realms of, of, of the clergy and, um, and Islam. And Abel, I'm the, getting a little lost. Well, I mean, I'm just saying that what's going on is there, there are people that want bad stuff to happen so that they can say, look, this bad stuff's happening. We need more army. We need more weapons. We need more control. And, and, and the, the same thing applies to, you know, the, the rules for sledding. I mean, you know, you need to, you know, take away people's choices so that they actually will, you know, break laws and get thrown in jail and, and, and create this whole mess. So is that what you think people should do, Abel, is uh, openly violate the no sledding ban? I, 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 I think that, uh, that <laughs> I, I don't know if that's the right answer. I, you know, some of that probably should be going on. Uh, you know, I, I, I don't want people to end up in jail for it or have huge fines and have a lot of money taken away. Okay, but hold on. I, so what, what, I, what I want to, to do is enlighten folk that when, when somebody comes down and comes up with some prohibition or somebody comes along and shoots up a, you know, a, 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 you know, a, a newspaper office, you know, that these things are there, there's there's something behind it, and that's what needs to be looked at. You need to look at why this stuff is. You only had to have those three guys con convinced to do this stuff. What three guys? The three guys that did the shooting in, in, in France. He, he's mixing, and th this is where I, I'm getting a little confused because you're jumping back and forth between the sledding uh, and yeah. the I, situation and I, in Paris. and I want to connect them. Yeah. I, I may be doing a bad job of it, but the fact is, is that, you know, it, it, it's all about the same kind of thing where something's, you know, happening. Sleds, sleds are going down hills and, you know, people are getting bruised and broken bones or whatever. And, and the other thing is, oh, the, the terrorists are coming along and, and shooting people up. So uh, let, let me ask this question to you real quick, Abel. You say they keep creating more laws to make more things illegal, but you don't think that people should necessarily go out and violate the laws. 
And I, I, I don't think you're advocating that people just obey every strange diktat from the government. So what is the solution but, to so, bad laws? And I think we're, we're actually generating it here in the free state. We need to, to kind of just kind of pull it back and make this awareness the awareness that you know, that, that government has not been doing us any favors. We've been at war, you know, for over a century in, in the Western world that, you know, and, 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 you know, we, we find things like enjoyment of sledding to be interfered at the same time. And all of this stuff is, is the is generated by this, uh, you know, government. Abel, thank you for the call. You started to break up there at the tail end of the call. Your call's welcome, 855-450-FREE. And please, have your thoughts together and don't jump back and forth and make us guess what you're trying to talk about. This is Free Talk Live. And now from the Cato Institute, the Cato Constitution Minute. The United States Constitution was written to secure the promise of the Declaration of Independence. In 1776, our founding fathers declared that individuals have certain inalienable rights, rights that cannot be taken away. Everyone in this nation has the right to live and is free to pursue happiness and liberty so long as they respect the rights of others. We created government to protect this freedom, not to give us special favors at the expense of others, and so our federal government exists to protect individual freedoms. That's why the first sentence of the Constitution, written in 1787, says that liberty is a blessing, even as it goes on to strictly limit what decisions government may make for us. America's founding fathers knew that protecting individual rights, our personal freedom, is the main purpose of government. To learn more, visit the Cato Institute online at cato.org. Hi, this is Mark Edge, host of Free Talk Live. We've been witnessing a meltdown of the very economic engine that powers this country. With a printing press tethered to Washington politicians, bureaucrats, and central bankers, how can we put our trust in paper money? For years, I've been buying gold and silver from Midas Resources, and you should too. Come see gold.freetalklive.com or call 877-357-9938 for a free book titled 10 Reasons to Own Gold. With Washington, D.C. delivering more debt and printed promises, common sense tells us the future of the trend is obvious. Everyone listening should visit gold.freetalklive.com or call 877-357-9938. I trust Midas Resources for my gold, silver, platinum, and you can too. Again, I want you to have this book, and it's free. It's gold.freetalklive.com or 877-357-9938. 877-357-9938. On Free Talk Live, we're bringing people to the ideas of liberty every day. From wrestling superstars like Glenn Jacobs. You guys really are having an impact, I believe. Like I said, uh, a lot of where I am now is due to listening to Free Talk Live. You changed my mind on some very important issues years ago. To random people tuning in on the radio. I was kind of stuck in the left-right paradigm. I heard your show by chance on a Saturday night. From there, I went on, joined the Free State Project, and become an amplifier. So, I mean, that's really the reason why I amp is uh, because I know that if it wasn't for you guys being on as many stations as you are, I never would have found the ideas of liberty. Your amp will directly change more lives by getting Free Talk Live in front of people looking for talk radio online and on the air. You can help by joining the AMP program for just $5 a month at amp.freetalklive.com and getting perks. That's amp.freetalklive.com. The three most important things you can do for Free Talk Live are, one, share one episode a week on Facebook or in some other social networking site. Two, buy the things you buy online through shop.freetalklive.com. Three, give five bucks a month to the AMP program. It's my firm belief that Free Talk Live's AMP program is the best use of your charitable dollar among liberty-oriented organizations. Support all the organizations you love. But make sure you give five bucks a month to AMP at amp.freetalklive.com. Ross Ulbricht was arrested by the FBI in 2013 and charged with victimless crimes in relation to allegedly operating the Bitcoin-based Silk Road black market. He has been in a prison cell awaiting trial ever since. If he did it, he's a hero for making the black market a safer place. If he did not, he's a man wrongfully accused. 
Either way, if you love freedom and want to end the war on drugs, Ross and his family need your support. You can learn more and help fund his defense at FreeRoss.org. That's FreeRoss.org. You can put the Liberty Radio Network on the air in your area. Visit broadcast.lrn.fm to learn how. Broadcast.lrn.fm. This is Free Talk Live, 855-450 free. That's the toll-free call-in line. You can call in about what's on your mind. We also have Skype. The Skype username is lrn.fm. And in studio tonight, it's Daryl. Derek J. And Danica. And Derek, next week, you will be going down to New York City for something that is very important. And it involves, I, I would dare say, one of the biggest... Uh, trials of this year, possibly one of the biggest trials the entire decade, uh, that is the Ross Ulbrich trial. Yeah, to me, this is the biggest trial of my lifetime so far. I would uh, agree with that. I think this is huge, has uh, far-reaching ramifications. For those who aren't familiar with the basics, the trial begins January 13th. The man on trial is Ross Ulbricht. He has been alleged to be the operator of the Silk Road black market website. The original. Yeah. And um, there have been some other charges thrown in as well um, by the prosecutors, like drug trafficking and um, they, they also murder have what for they hire. The, well, the murder for hire. Not a charge. Yeah, but they're, they're going to bring that up in court. uncharged claims that is sitting in Maryland court. Right. But they have hit him with what they call the kingpin statute. Uh, That basically says that he was running this elaborate uh, drug ring and he was the mastermind behind it. So the FedGov, the federal government, is really trying to railroad this guy. And they're doing it in Manhattan, New York City uh, Courthouse. 500 Pearl Street is where the trial is going to be held. It begins January 13th. I will be there at 7.30 a.m. Uh, with a peaceful demonstration. There might be some other people in attendance. If you would like to attend, if you're going to be in the New York area, or if you have friends, or you want to spread this event around, I have created a Facebook event at tinyurl.com slash silkroadtrial. That's tinyurl.com slash silkroadtrial. And there, uh, that'll take you to a Facebook event page. Please, RSVP as going, because I'm going to produce as many signs as there are people going. So what are you planning to do while you're down there other than just protesting this trial? Nothing. And that's a a legal um, liability. So I am being very clear that I am there to peacefully demonstrate. There are going to be other people who are there to be members of the media. They're going to be reporting from both inside and outside of the courthouse. The Liberty Beat will be there. TheLibertyBeat.com is where you can get the updates on that daily. And um, there are going to be other people who are doing jury nullification outreach. Some people are going to be handing out pamphlets in uh, to the general population outside of the courthouse. Some of those people might be jurors. Some people will not be. And uh, so we are all doing different events uh, that are completely separate from one another. Uh, we are not even... Um, communicating with one another and that's like part of a legal liability it's really weird how like the government could potentially charge uh we activists with uh crimes if we interact with one another yeah or jury tampering is the one that i'm concerned about because uh there was a heroic man named julian heiklin who was arrested at this very location for handing out jury nullification pamphlets. Now, if he were well, handing out jury I, nullification pamphlets... I believe that the charges against Heiklin were recently dropped. They were, that's true. But the charges would have stuck if he were speaking about a particular case, which oh, he was not. Oh, okay. He, he was, was just doing jury nullification in general. Yes, he was talking about oh. jury nullification in general to the general audience. But if he were talking about jury nullification in the case of Ross Ulbricht or a particular trial that was pending before the court, that would be a serious crime. That would be called jury tampering. And I am not doing that. I am steering very clear of that by peacefully demonstrating and not even speaking to the people who are doing jury nullification outreach. So once again, 
the URL, tinyurl.com slash Silk Road Trial. Be there. If you can't be in New York, spread the Facebook event to your friends. Now, is there some sort of fundraiser going on to help pay for the cost of these activists that are going to New York? I know there's one for the Liberty Bee, but I don't know if you've set no. one up, Derek. No, I'm not uh, organizing a fundraiser to, to pay activists to come down. There okay, have been so some people who have, who I, have donated. I, I guess my question is, if somebody's listening yeah. and they can't go... Because this is on Tuesday, right? And today is Friday. Yeah. But they want to support you. Is there a link on the event that you've created? No. Currently, there is not. And I don't have any intention to create one. I mean, the 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 time, the money, it's it's all too short. There are other people, like places where you can donate money. The Liberty Beat is going to be there if you want to donate to them while they're covering the event. Do that. I'm going to be there if you want to donate to me personally. My website is derekj.me. You know, I, I, we're all individuals, and the event right. is actually called Individuals for Ross Ulbricht because I want to be very clear. No one is in charge. You are on your own. We are all individuals, okay? So uh, I am there to support Ross, and uh, I hope you will come too. Yeah, and if you can't, again, DerekJ.me is where you can go to donate to help offset the cost that Derek will accrue mm -hmm. while in New York. And Danica, you've got a story that is somewhat related to New York. It's not necessarily about the Ross Ulbricht trial. Oh, and one more thing about the Ross Ulbricht trial. Yeah. There was a fundraiser recently to... Put jury nullification information in a lot of the billboard bus stop billboards. Yeah, that's still ongoing around the uh, courthouse. That fundraiser is still ongoing. Do you uh, know if successful. those signs are up yet? Yes, those signs are up, and uh, they are right out in front of the courthouse. So it's likely that if a person is walking into the courthouse for whatever reason, they will see it and they will learn more about being an informed juror. So, Danica, tell us about what's going on in New York City that's not related to the Ross Ulbricht witch hunt. Sure, definitely. If you're you know, in New York but for some reason want to do other outreach besides the Ross Ulbricht trial, um, you could certainly join the New York protesters in handing out loose cigarettes for donations. Uh, so this Times Square event aims to draw attention to Eric Garner's alleged crime. Now, what's interesting about this is that these individuals are – handing out cigarettes not for the intentions on selling them or anything but they're handing them out and the you know they're suggesting that people make some sort of donation so they're, so they're giving away cigarettes for free for free and somebody can then make a donation that is correct and the donation would go to the garner family so do you know well, if these awesome. cigarettes were purchased in new york and the government of new york already has collected taxes Why? on these. What's the difference? That's a good question. Well, because the the claim was that Eric Garner was not paying taxes on these cigarettes. That's why the police confronted him and ultimately choked him to death was over taxation. Hmm. So it says here that the Manhattan Libertarian Party is organizing the Saturday protest and plans to give donations um, there, uh, as well to also to the Project Hospitality, a food bank in the Staten Island borough of New York City. So it's going to the Garden Family as well as Project Hospitality. Uh, in a press statement, Party Chairman Brian Waddell said that members are fed up with the silly laws that make it possible for these tragic, terrible tragedies to happen. Uh, so right now, the NYPD has not offered comment, but says researching the legality of handing out loose cigarettes for donations. So. You know, there could be some stipulation going on there, but who oh, knows? Oh, and I, I can almost guarantee you that they will oh, find sure. some reason to arrest somebody for handing out a cigarette. Oh, there's always legal. Thoughts on that? 855-450 free. Did you know by age 50, half of all men have an enlarged prostate? This means more urges to urinate, longer bathroom trips, waking at night to urinate, or issues with sex. If this sounds familiar, call us now. Because we're shipping free bottles of Super Beta Prostate to listeners of this station. Super Beta Prostate is a non-prescription formula guaranteed to reduce the symptoms of your enlarged prostate. It's yours free. Pay only shipping and handling. Just call 1-800-881-1075. In clinical trials, the ingredient in Super Beta Prostate was shown to reduce urges to urinate, improve bladder emptying, reduce waking at night to urinate, and improve quality of life. This super beta prostate free offer is for listeners of this station. 
but it won't last. Don't wait. Just call 1-800-881-1075. That's 1-800-881-1075. Call 1-800-881-1075. Hundreds of exasperated Americans confirmed Thursday that, for fuck's sake, the article they just clicked on is actually a stupid f***ing video. I clicked on the story thinking I'd be in and out of there in 30 seconds, but then that little buffering thing popped up and I was like, here we f***ing go. Quickly hitting the mute button after being disoriented by a loud blast of noise from some stupid f***ing ad for Hotels.com, many of the deceived then scanned the webpage for some corresponding write-up so that they could simply read in peace, but reports indicated that would just be too inconvenient, wouldn't it? Look, I don't want to watch a report or interview or panel discussion or whatever the hell this is. I just want to skim an article real quick and move on with my day. This is bullshit. After seriously considering hitting the back button on their browsers, sources say the majority of readers decided to just let the goddamn video play out. You know what? I'll watch the goddamn thing. And I'll probably watch the next video that automatically loads afterwards. me. This is the Onion News Network. I love my magic mud. I drink a lot of coffee. I had stains on my teeth. Then I found my magic mud, and I was told it would remove stains. So I paid attention when I brushed the first time. My magic mud is black tooth powder, and the difference it made in my teeth in one application was noticeable. With four, my teeth were as white as you normal folks out there. Please go to mymagicmud.com and buy a jar. There's 150 applications for 25 bucks. You can use Bitcoin, mymagicmud.com. You can listen to Free Talk Live on the radio, podcast, satellite, webcam, and our live streams. But did you know you can listen to Free Talk Live from any phone, anywhere? Add this number to your phone, 213-493-0308. It's a long-distance call, so make sure you're familiar with your phone's calling plan. The Listen Lines are airing the latest episode of Free Talk Live 24 hours a day, including our live shows. Call 213-493-0308. That's 213-493-0308. What if the key to achieving liberty in your lifetime was to move together with others who think like you? Liberty activists are joining the Free State Project, which is over 70% of the way to its goal of 20,000 participants. And they're already making the move to New Hampshire. The successes are piling up and are proving the Free State Project is a real movement and no longer just a great idea. When you're planning your move, consider Keen. Keen is famous for its civil disobedience and non-cooperation, and there's plenty of political opportunity as well. From demonstrations and vigils to outreach and volunteering, there's a lot going on in Keen. Keen is the liberty media capital of the world, with television, talk radio, and more, all originating here. Though it's more than just activism, with regular social events each week. See what's happening at freekeen.com and get connected with video, audio, free books, a forum, and activist tools you can download and use in your area at freekeen.com. That's freekeen.com. You can connect with the Liberty Radio Network via our Facebook page at facebook.lrn.fm. That's facebook.lrn.fm. This is Free Talk Live. Still time for your thoughts. 855-450-FREE. That's the toll-free call-in line. You can also use the Skype. LRN.FM is the username. You will need to send a contact request if you haven't already done so. That will be approved. And then just call in. And in studio tonight, it's Daryl. Derek J. And Danica. At coffee.freetalklive.com, you can get a free pound of the best coffee. Buzzbox. It's shade grown, 1%, 100% organic, and top 1% grade Arabica. Coffee is a very absorbent crop, and this makes the organic certification that much more important. Buzzbox is competitively priced with other high end coffees. But they do have something that other coffee producers seem to care nothing for. They've worked with us to set up a program that turns coffee profits into microloans with Kiva.org. Help us change lives by offering people in poverty an opportunity to change their own lives. Get started now by getting your free pound of coffee at coffee.freetalklive.com. You pay for shipping, and you can cancel the subscription at any time. Coffee. 
www.freetalklive.com. So, Derek, in just a moment, you're going to tell us about some charges that were dismissed against an activist down in Austin, Texas. But before you do that, I, I'm going to take a chance here with a caller who identifies as nobody calling from the rabbit hole. And I hope that I do not regret taking this call. Nobody, you are on Free Talk Live. Hello, thanks for taking my call. Hey. Uh, yeah, what's on hey. your mind? Um, I just, everybody's always talking about uh, race and everything. I, I don't really ever think I hear like a comprehensive, like coherent uh, definition of race or ethnicity. I don't, I don't really even know what is meant by it other than maybe uh, some like bundle of, of traits or differences amongst some, you know, segment of a population or whatever. Um, but mostly it seems that I don't know, like these differences they're 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 divided up and then like through government and all these control apparatus or, or whatever, uh they're controlled into like different classes. You know, like engineered to, to be a, a certain culture and a certain class. Does anybody else kinda follow that? Yeah, that that does make a little bit of sense. And if you've ever read the book 1984 or A Brave New World, then I can certainly understand uh, more a little bit about what you're saying there about people are sort of you know put into a mindset of you're a lower class than this other person. And certainly there, there are still countries – uh, today, sadly, that do have class or caste systems. And I just pulled up a definition for ethnicity, and it is defined as the fact or state of belonging to a social group that has a common national or cultural tradition. Huh. So does that no, help you understand about, that term a little bit? Nothing about genetics in there. No, oh, it it seems uh, arbitrary. Yeah, really it seems to incomplete. Me. It seems highly subjective. Yeah, I agree. Right, with you. It, it is, but you know, for the most part, people that identify as ethnic Irish are going to share some genetic traits. People that identify as yeah, Scottish are, are going to share genetic but traits. I mean, the, these groups of people, you know, there, there's all these, you know, they've we all have different sets of traits and genes and whatever, and Certainly. all through history, they've been different. And then you say, you know, that the people, they intermingle or whatever, they, they breed, and then you get a new set of traits, and then you get another new set of traits. Each generation, it changes. You're never going to have, you know, this one race that, you know, there is no such thing as equality and you know, all the, all these egalitarian notions. I think really that's what the, at the root of all of this is just, egalitarianism what what do you mean by that everybody wanting you know all values to be equal that that no wanting no one to uh, discriminate on any basis to have any any prejudice to, to not you know do their own uh you know cost benefit analysis i guess and decide what values are most appropriate to their life and and you know how to make their choices based on the context of their surroundings um, you know, you, you see people, uh, you make a lot of, you know, value judgments based on their, their character, their actions, and even their appearance, be it their skin color or tattoos or whatever it might be. And, uh, I think that's entirely appropriate. So, uh, I'm tempted to just say, uh, I think we should all uh, call ourselves racist <laughs> because I believe it's appropriate to, to discriminate, uh, and make those value judgments. But just... Just because you you know make a value judgment based on circumstances does not necessarily make one a racist. A racist is someone that thinks that their ethnicity or their group or race is better than every other group of people. So just because you make a value judgment based on circumstances does not mean that you think that people that look like you are superior to people that do not. 
Derek, mm-hmm. I think you had a point that you wanted to add. No? Uh, nobody no, is Danica there... was about to speak up. That's oh, why I okay. pointed the camera no, at her. I, I was just trying to think that you're ba- you're basically saying that we're all racist against something in our lives, whether it's racist against someone's clothes, job, upbringing, maybe not necessarily skin color. Am I, am I correct in that? No, I'm... Well, okay, my definition, I suppose, and it may be incorrect, of a uh, racist is is having prejudice based on uh, certain traits. I guess skin color is usually what it is, uh, and I believe that everybody has it, and they have it for a reason. They have it for because they have reason, because they're rational, and uh, they understand statistically that but you know, most, they need to make judgment calls. But most judgments are passed on are passed on to us we're not we're not born with these judgments they're they're passed on to us by the, by those performers, but parents teachers anyone that has a significant and influence also experience. On us. yes we we are uh you know uh influenced but we still as well have uh, you know our experiences and i think that's mostly what uh leads you know us beings with rational minds i think the majority of human beings are uh, there is a small percentage that, yes, are led by, you know, tradition and things like you're speaking of. So, nobody, are you making the case that uh, could benefit a person t- uh, to be racist? Well, I, that, like I that started with, uh, I don't understand what is meant by these words. I well, I thought we just defined it. Buzzword. Oh, I thought we just defined it as uh, having a prejudice uh, with regard to a, a person's, uh, like, skin color or other genetics, right? So, are you saying... Uh, that a person benefits from making certain discriminations, right? That we that we all discriminate exactly right. in our lives, so, and that's that's to so our benefit. On, so based on certain characteristics, we will just go ahead and say uh, certain skin colors. Uh, as has been you know talked about on the show uh, previously, uh, you know based on th- those things, you can make judgment calls, rational judgment calls, uh, which are. Statistically, the probability of it happening, you know, whatever, it's true. It's rational to make, you know, certain judgment calls based on those, you know, things. You're not following it, me? No, and I, I can see some benefit to it. Like, you, I mean, I can see some benefit as well as some, you know, not, not so great benefits about it. Like, say you had, you know, an issue with a certain individual that, you know, had different posture or skin color and you just you kind of learn to be distressing as as them as general rule i mean it's perfectly fine if you choose not to do business with people certain color that's certainly up to you but one bad experience shouldn't prevent you from doing that in the future nobody thank you for the call still time for your call 855 450 free this is free talk live Hi, everyone. I'm Chuck Woolery. After putting a few thousand couples together on Love Connection, you know that nothing kills romance faster than bad breath. Smart Mouth gets at the cause of bad breath without the burn, and you get clean breath for about 12 hours. Other mouthwashes only prevent bad breath for about an hour. Gum and mints, well, they just cover it up. Use Smart Mouth in the morning for great breath all day. Rinse in the evening for clean, kissable breath all night. You can even wake up without morning breath. Smart Mouth, for 12 hours of real clean breath, Look for the green box at your favorite store. In a trial by jury, the primary function of a juror is not to dispense punishment to the accused. It is to protect your fellow citizens from being unjustly deprived of their life, liberty, or property. As a juror, you can say no to unjust laws and prevent government abuses of power by refusing to convict. Legislative, executive, judicial, the fourth branch of government is we the people. Find out more from the fully informed jury association at FIJA.org. The knowledge of the ancients, tried and true, trusted herbs and extracts fused with the latest nutraceutical science. Introducing the all new ancient defense herbal immunity blend crafted with over 14 key ancient herbs and extracts to supercharge and prepare your body for what experts admit is the most dangerous season of the year. 
we have rejected hundreds of other formulations in our quest to bring you what is simply the most powerful and comprehensive proprietary formula that we have ever created in the realm of herbal immunity. For the last two years, our team has been working with top doctors, nutritionists, and chemists to develop the ultimate nutraceutical formulation. Experience the benefits of combining over 14 ancient herbs and extracts with exciting new advances in nutraceutical science. Now is the time to secure ancient defense for you and your family. Visit ancientdefense.com or call 888-253-3139. That's ancientdefense.com. Since time began, tyrants have taken aim at personal liberties. Now there's a movie that aims back. The government has no more right to tell us what to put in our bodies than they have to take our guns or tell us what books we can read. Six drug police were eaten by bears while raiding a marijuana farm. On your knees, you dirty hippies! Jesus. On your knees! What's the problem, officer? Today, many cops who enforce pot laws do so only because it provides them with cushy jobs, good benefits, and a chance to push people around. I was an undercover narcotics officer. The drug war is nothing but a farce. The Second Amendment says you gotta keep you and your gat intact. Guns and Weed, The Road to Freedom. A film by Michael W. Dean and Nima Vidati. DVD available now at gunsandweed.com or on Amazon. Hey! That's gunsandweed.com. Makes the perfect gift. Remember, that's gunsandweed.com. Did you know that you can listen to and watch Free Talk Live during our live show seven days a week from 7 to 10 p.m. Eastern via our studio cam at cam.freetalklive.com? Not only that, but you can also chat with other listeners at the same time. Do I need to mention that both the studio cam and chat room are totally free? Outside of Free Talk Live's live hours, you won't see a cam feed, but we'll hear audio from the Liberty Radio Network. So listen, watch, and chat all free at cam.freetalklive.com. That's cam.freetalklive.com. Do you drink coffee? Was the last cup of coffee you had really good? Free Talk Live has teamed up with BuzzBox to bring you the best of the best coffee. Shade grown, organic, top 1% grade Arabica. But what's different is for every 10 people that get their coffee through coffee.freetalklive.com, we can give another micro loan through Kiva. Get a free pound to try it out. A free pound of the best of the best coffee. Help others one cup at a time. Coffee.freetalklive.com. While our satellite channel is free to listen to, it's not free for us. You can help us cover our satellite costs with the chip-in on the right side of the page at lrn.fm. Eight fifty-five, four fifty, free. That's the toll-free call-in line. There might be time for your call here in the final segment of the show. In studio tonight, it's Daryl. Derek J. And Danica. And Derek J. Next week, we'll be heading down to New York City to do some demonstrating outside of the uh, federal court building in Manhattan, where Ross Ulbricht will be on trial for a host of crimes related to the alleged operation of the Silk Road online marketplace that is on the dark web. The original Silk Road is what he was alleged to have operated. They are now on the, I believe, the third incarnation of that. Is that correct? Yes, third. Yeah, so Derek, hopefully you will be posting updates online so that people can follow what is going on there and hopefully you don't run into any legal problems as well, activists are prone to do well i'll be uh blogging about it of course but the best place to watch for this trial is the libertybeat.com they'll be providing daily updates they've got reporters who are going to be attending the trial and making it their business to report on this and there's an activist down in austin texas who has gotten into trouble somewhat frequently recently. And there's actually good news regarding Antonio Bueller. Woo! Uh, so give us the updates on that. Case Bueller. dismissed. Yeah, Bueller, Bueller. What yeah. were the charges? Uh, the charges, uh, I actually don't remember exactly what his charges were. I th I'm sure it was like uh, the catch-all charge of disorderly conduct. We'll, we'll find out 
quickly here. Wasn't he filming police? Yeah. So here, he, here it was. A judge in Austin's municipal court accepted the state's motion to dismiss one of a set of charges against Peaceful Streets Project co-founder Antonio Bueller. Friday. Wait, hold on. The state yes. motioned to dismiss the charge. That's they correct. Did not deal with that it. is not something that happens very often when activists get arrested. Nope. Bueller was not actually arrested for the acts that earned what? him a grand jury indictment of interfering with a police officer. Yeah. What do you think that means, Daryl? What do you think he did? What, uh, the charge is interfering with a police officer. What do you think the activist did? Well, I, I am somewhat familiar, and I don't know if this was the actual case, but there was something to where he was filming police. They told him to back up. He backed up. They came over, told him to back up again. And he said, I've already backed up once. And they said, well, you have to back up again. And he said, I don't want to back up again. Yeah. And then they arrested him. Well, that was one famous case involving Antonio Bueller. This was actually a different case. Uh, it's my understanding. Oh, is this, this is for the one filming? where he was yelling F you and a bunch of other obscenities nope. at the police? Uh, I believe that was another one. <laughs> so I don't know. There's you know, lots. he gets... Uh, it, Involved with the police quite yeah, a bit. He gets arrested a good bit. Well, this wasn't an arrest, remember. He was uh, not arrested for the acts that earned him the grand jury indictment of interfering with the police officer. What he did, Daryl, just to, <laughs> you know, drum roll, please. See, filming and <laughs> eventually outing the undercover work of an APD, that's Austin Police Department officer, Justin Berry, on August 24th, 2012. So he was filming the police. One of the police officers was an undercover, and he outed that person. Job well done. I wish there were more people like him. But as with his now iconic New Year's Eve 2012 arrest, which you recapped for us, Daryl. Which one was that? Because I the, recapped two arrests. Right. Well, uh, the, that was the one where he was uh, helping some young ladies who were being harassed by police officers, and he recorded a, with, a, with a camera. Um, and his later arrests on August 26, 2012, and September 21, 2012, he found himself facing Class C misdemeanor charges for each incident. So he had a victimless crime spree of his own. Yes, he did. Originally set for November, the hearing got pushed back after Bueller's late October acquittal on similar charges relating to his New Year's Eve arrest. Now, I think this is exciting to talk about. I don't normally cover um, stuff like this, but... You know, this is a victory. And activists winning in court is att- is attention worthy because it doesn't happen all the time. Right. So job well done, Bueller, and whoever this attorney is, who was such a rock star that he had two cases dismissed like in a row. Bueller and his legal team weren't happy to learn that the judge dismissed the case. His attorney, Millie Thompson, went so far as to post a Facebook that she'd never been so disappointed over a dismissal and there's an expletive (laughs) expletive deleted there i think this would be a great opportunity she writes for the people to once again see how the austin police department and city prosecutors use city ordinances to victimize people who've already been victimized by the police it would also have opened people's eyes to how corrupt the grand jury process can be oh the grand jury process can be very corrupt And we covered a story recently that it's actually easier to indict a ham sandwich than a police officer because prosecutors basically tell the grand jury what to do. They throw evidence at them and then say, vote, unless it's a police officer. And then they throw all of the evidence and they drag it out and they give them way too much evidence and... They, they basically have the trial without having the trial, and they confuse them into not indicting. Well, this can be very confusing for all parties involved. And uh, just to be clear, this is not a world where you want to expect rational um, verdicts coming from courtrooms. Of course, we know it's sort of like Alice in Wonderland. Once you walk in there, up is down, black right. is white. 
And so what's really going on here is that the police can arrest basically anybody at a whim, and they don't have to justify it. There are no consequences if they falsely arrest somebody. And here's exactly what happened in this case. The police don't want to testify. They don't want to bring this to, to court. As I mentioned at the beginning of the article, who brought the motion to dismiss? The state. So they're dropping the charges that they brought upon him. And why would that be? Well, Barry's testimony, that's the officer he outed, could have proved vital moving forward as Bueller faces charges that he failed to obey the officer's orders during the aforementioned arrest. He'll stand trial on those charges soon. He said Thompson has filed a motion demanding a speedy trial, though a court date has not yet been settled, before eventually reconvening in court for his fourth and final failure to obey a lawful order charge stemming from his September arrest. So this is the police covering their own butts, saying... We made a false arrest, and we don't want to have to explain it in front of the public. Right, and I'm still looking for an actual answer to the question of how does a police officer know that he is giving a lawful order? Because we're told all the time in court, especially when police officers are asked questions that may make them draw a legal conclusion— that they are not authorized or qualified to answer the question because uh, objection that calls for a legal conclusion. But yet they make these judgment calls of you disobeyed a lawful order. Yeah, arresting someone calls for a legal conclusion. Right. So they make legal yeah, conclusions agree. all the time. But yet when they're asked in court, it said that they can't answer the question. Yeah. But we know based on hundreds of stories that police officers tell people to do things that are unlawful all the time, or rather the order is unlawful. That There was the story out of, I, I believe it was uh, Londonderry or New London here in New Hampshire, mm -hmm. where a police officer had told a teenage girl, I'll make these charges go away if you give me nude photos. Hmm. She filed a complaint against him. He was not convicted. Just of a course, complaint? Of course. She just filed a complaint? That's it? Well, it, it, That sounds I, I don't know if it was a legal complaint or just some internal sort of thing. Um, uh, where's your complaint department? But th there um, was a court that recently ruled that he did nothing wrong. Although it's blatantly unconstitutional to, you know, essentially demand nude photographs to make a ticket right, go away. Right, harassment. So, you know, who decides what is a lawful order and what is not? And I would say that the police officer makes that decision, but yet the judge will not allow the police officer to answer the question, what is a lawful order? Yo, um, we were talking about how Muslims uh, want should be generating as much good press as possible earlier in the show. I would just want to make a, a breaking announcement that uh, two Muslim organizations have stepped in to donate $100,000 towards assisting Detroit residents who are facing water shutoffs. I just think that's an awesome story. So good for you guys. Yeah, that's like, yes, way to generate good press. I, I thought you were going to say for a second that police officers need to do more to, you know, say not all cops are bad.